Hey, everybody, this is The Verb Sessions with the amazing Mickey Dunn and the amazing Al Morgan. Why does Mickey get first billing on this? I mean, my goodness. Can you do mine first? Let's do this again. All right, all right, let's go. Hey. <laughs> okay, ready? All right. <coughs> Let me put on my radiotic voice. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Go on. Hey, everybody, this is The Verve Sessions with the amazing Al Morgan and the sidekick Mickey Duns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're robbing to and my I Batman. <laughs> that, that sounded so, it sounded so it's better the second time around. So, yeah. All right. So, uh, I guess it's my turn. So, we're here with the, uh, the lovely Jace Nicole. So, aw, yes, aw. yes. Aw, aw. So, uh, Jace. <laughs> yes. So, why are you here? What do you do? Like, what do you, what do you do? I always bring interesting I'm, people I'm on here. I'm actually here to harass y'all because okay. I have nothing else to do. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I, um, I'm an actress. Nice. I like to call myself an independent film actress because I'm not, like, SAG yet. So right. I'm indie. Um, was part of a, was a radio personality, but I kind of had to pull myself from that situation. And so I'm just like, you know, I work. So you like freelance regular. now, pretty much. Yeah, pretty freelance much. Now. So, yeah, I'm trying to nice. root myself in. So. All right, so you talked about SAG. Um, yes. Explain that process. Like, are, is that something that you're trying to go towards, SAG? or? Not, necess- not right now. Okay. SAG is, first of all, I don't knock anyone that does that, that is SAG affiliated. Can you explain SAG? What is that? Screen Actors Guild? Yes, yeah, Screen Actors Guild. Okay. Um, first of all, SAG to get in is about 22, 2,000 and, 2,200 and something. I'm going to say it's like 2,270 something. Yeah. Right. Now that's just a one time fee. But also, too, with that fee, it's connected like another $100 fee. Now, it's good because it does. Um, it's good for the most part because it is like protection for actors that are trying to, you know. But for people like myself who like working a lot, right, it's not good. Also, too, it's like once you become SAG, every year you have to pay an annual fee. Now, this is not if you're getting jobs. This is not if you're doing commercials or doing TV shows. or You're paying for a just-in-case. Now, if I'm going to pay an annual fee of 100 and something, I want to pay for because I am. Right. <laughs> not... And I might be, right. no. Also, too, with like I do a lot of independent film. So it's like if I was to become SAG, I would have to actually, and say like, you know, Al called me up and was like, me and Richard doing a project, come do it. I would have to actually change my name to something. I would have to be like, you know, uh, Jace Williams or Nicole Benson, something crazy. I would have to change my name. I couldn't use Jace Nicole. Because Mick said, "Why not?" Sag, I will get in trouble. What does that mean? Get in trouble? Is that they will rebu- rebuke your your license? No, or you your can you can get fined. It's it's it's. We got a phone call going on now. That's all right. Nah, it's, 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 we're just no, gonna no, let it flow. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. No, it's not. I don't even recognize the number. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that might be the Sag office. <laughs> right. <laughs> like we're here. Right. Now I am Sag eligible, but I'm not trying to join Sag anytime soon. But if you like, were a big enough actor or actress, would that would you have to do that, or would you? To be a, yeah, like if I started doing main, like if I started, if I landed a show, like say Scandal Part Two. Yes. I don't know. She said now she, Kerry Washington. That's worth it. Being someone that's always on commercials is worth it. Like if I happen to land something that I'm always doing work, I would not mind being SAG. I would not mind paying that amount of money, and then every you know if I'm working. But if I'm just like sitting around twiddling my thumbs right. it's like you know what i mean like i'm getting more work independent right now than a lot of people i know who are sag because they can't right you know you have to wait for a sag production to call you wow other than that and you go yeah i see you yeah, Mickey. yeah you see, your face, could, i'm just gonna describe mickey's it's face utterly rid- yeah it's crazy so mickey you got any questions is there a, a is there, there has anybody asked what's the exact reason why i mean well, they I just want to control be- I think it might be kind of control. I mean, like, I'm not sad, so I don't know, like, the full so reason. So like the, the dad that doesn't want you to go out at all. And if yeah, you and do, you say, they want to know where right. you're and he, going yes. out. And he's like, sag is like the dad where you say, well, dad, how come I can? Because I said so. You know, you dad, can. you don't even get you don't even get it out. <laughs> you, like, don't you, don't even, even, yeah, you don't even give me a reason. And you're just like, dad, I can't. You, no, you cannot go outside and play unless 
But there has to be benefits to it, though. So, I mean... If you're working, yeah. You are working. If you have a TV show or you are constantly in commercials, yeah, it's benefits. They're not hooking you you up, are they? What do you mean? Like, they're not... Throwing you free rolls? Yeah. No, you have to land your own shit. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know in 2013 if that's the way. Sad? It sounds like the music industry. Yeah, man. Sounds like, uh, you know... uh, Major major labels are kind of no. dying down. SAG is about SAG. SAG is the same way they've been from back in two thousand, early two thousand. SAG is SAG. So rules you can't, are rules. You so cannot bend. You right. cannot. Like I said, if you want to do other projects that are not SAG, you have to change your name. Wow. And I'm not changing Jason Cole. So let's just say, for instance, that <gasps> right. you uh, right. Right. Let's just say, right. for instance, that you uh, you get fined, and then you're like, I don't want to be SAG anymore. Now, that part, I, I'm sure there's a way you can get out of SAG, but it's probably right. another crazy amount of money. Right. Yeah, to get like, out. I don't, I've not, like I said, I've, I, I'm SAG eligible, but I've not, I have not paid to be, I'm not going to pay. It's like you about to try to get a, a little sorority or something like that. comes to me and right. says, hi, we are our management. We have guaranteed you a TV show that right. you will be on for seven seasons. And I'll say, yeah, give me that. Uh, I'll go ahead and say, sign up for SAG. Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. But other than that, it's like, nah, uh, I'm gotcha. not paying no annual fee for you might. Right. So what have you worked on? Oh, man. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, she's now, now you guys, when I met. Actually, coffee. I met this young lady. It's coffee. I Are met her about. Are allowed to say about, the brand of coffee it is or no? That's I, like, you're in a safe place. You say whatever you okay. want to say. This is Keurig Mocha Nut Fudge. Oh. Mm. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I love coffee. I'm such a coffee nut. I love coffee, too. <laughs> yeah, Mickey, Mickey is a guy who drinks his straight. He yeah, no no I sugar, no. Sugar. It's a real man over here, this guy. No yeah. Mocha. This he's guy. Straight. Well, see, straight Dark coffee. Roots. Yeah. Well, see, you're a man. It's a real man over there. I'm, I'm a girl. <laughs> this, she has, has a, you know? Yeah. an extra girl voice, like. Yeah. I'm girly. I have on like ruffles right now. So back to the question at hand. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what have you worked on, like recently? Recently? Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, right now I am working on two web series. Are you, aren't you part of one of them? I'm part of both of them. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turn up. <laughs> Turn oh, up. please. <laughs> yeah, so I am working on white paper. And have you seen the teasers for it? Mm-hmm. How do you I have. Them? I like, like them. them. I like them. Yay. Do I, I do. Look, do I look convincing as a hit woman? I think so. You think so? I like the one in the elevator. You don't like the one in the I like that garage? one, too, but I especially okay. like that one. Because right. uh, you were there. I think that was. I, I think that might that might have been my idea. I don't know. Yeah, it was. I like that one, no, but it was executed yeah. by my brother Richard Johnson. Shout out to Richard Johnson, my man. Rich. If you could only see Al's face as he's explaining all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> grinning from ear to ear. Now let me tell you, no. Let me tell you the first time I met Jay. She, I don't even know you remember this. I met her on the the, the Charlie Factor. The Charlie Factor. And your wife was there. She was. Yeah, she came yeah, she in. Was. That's right. She yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, the Charlie Fat is yeah. this short film that we did for uh, v, uh, DVX. 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 There you go, DVX, yeah, users. DVX user. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, really, really cool. It all came together. That was my first stream. time. That's my second time meeting Richard. Really? Yeah. Okay. Rich is awesome. Yeah, he really yeah. is. That's that's. Like and once he latched on you, he's not letting go. Yeah, like we work together all the like, time. Ow. So I yeah. hear him not. Ow. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's my man. So. Yeah, we worked together on a couple projects, but I've yeah. seen a lot of her other work out, like Torn. I saw you in Torn. Right, right. She played this amazing role as a hood chick. What was, is that? that am I describing no, that? Am I describing no, 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 no. that? That was Razor Blade. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to that one. Oh, Razor Blade okay. City. Okay. What would you describe that role as? It was so fun. I had to. I got a chance to be like ultra ghetto hood. Yeah. I even had. I even spoke people. differently. Not in smack. She was well, smacking the back of her head. Yeah, you know, she I had this, and I really had a wig on because my hair is long, mm-hmm. and so I had to pin it, and it was like roasting. And people that do not wear, people that like. I don't wear. Uh, I've never worn a weave before. Just I'll just wig. You know, yeah, it, but it, 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 yeah. Just talk, just how, out of the womb. Right. <laughs> how women? I first of all, let's give a round of applause to the women who wear wigs I'm and weaves I'm to clap because here. y'all are good. No, no, no. Yes. You want me to tell you why? Because when when we did um, Razor Blade City, it was hot, so I had to take my hair and wrap it and pin it, and then I put the wig on top. It is so itchy. It feels like like you just want to. Do this. Right. Just want, there's no webcam, but yeah, it's like right. I'm making a really fast itching, a very fervid itching motion. 
it's so itchy and it's hot. And also, too, women that wear like weaves, it depends on how they put it in. They either glue it in or they'll like actually had their hair braided around their head yeah. and they sew it in. So it's still the same thing. Like I have my hair wrapped around my head, pinned up with the wig on top. It is so uncomfortable. Aggravating. It's itchy. That's why they constantly, you see them doing this because it's so itchy. So women that do, that wear weaves and wigs all the time. It's a commitment. I applaud y'all because that shit is crazy. Man, no, boo, uh, no, boo, what Mickey, I'm saying, what are you doing? I'm just Mickey? saying, you know, it, it, that takes some commitment. Yeah. yeah. My God. Your leather, your leather stray. I got chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> your leather stray. Honestly. You know, you, you see all the, you know, the yours. I could tell from the jump. I looked at the top. I said, Oh, you know, it's mine. That's yeah. that's You're that's that's, that's uh legitimate. <laughs> but the other, it, it, you but know, the, but no. the ones that do it, that's commitment. You, they like, probably you, you don't know, understand. It's something that probably their you feet twist understand. as an itch, and they just won't even they won't even yeah. touch it. Oh, go. it was so <clears> uncomfortable, <throat> and we'd be filming for hours. And it was hot. So I'm just like, there'd be times we like, and I'm like dying. I'm sitting here like, <laughs> but I couldn't, I couldn't break character. I could, I had to stay in character, but there were so many times I wanted to just, you know, ah, and scratch. See, <laughs> you know, SAG and like, needs to so, sign yeah. you and just let you do what you no. want to do. Look at the work that she's doing. <laughs> Itching and, and holding character. <laughs> Why not? Right. <laughs> so yeah, so, so I, let's talk about some other roles. What other roles have you been in? gotten a little bit longer um so let's see my very first film was a short film called fish that was with princeton halt um then we did oh my god this is a while ago this is a good minute ago then i did cookies and cream which did a lot of film festivals nice that had some nice acclaim um i'm gonna have to pull up oh, we got to pull up imdb Please, up here so that we got to do torn yeah i'm on imdb also, too, if you go to Google and you type in Jace Nicole, oh, damn. I'm there. Yeah, it's like um, I did a movie called uh, a short film called Black Two Sugars, um, Charlie Factor, Hangman, uh, Cookies and Cream, <laughs> Torn, Razor Blade City. So which one of those uh, can't are your favorite? What's your favorite? What's my favorite role that you played in? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me not. Let me, that's so hard. If you had to give somebody one performance award, you were like, really, I did a great job on that. Which one would it have been? I don't know because every time I get behind the camera, I give my best. So I can't say, like, oh, this is the one and only film. Now, if you like different genres. Right. Like, if you like hood comedy, Razor Blade City. Okay. If you like independent films that show. Because, like, with Cookies and Cream, a lot of people were, because um, me and Princeton Hall, who's the director and a very good friend of mine, We've laughed at a couple because, like, you can go on and see different reviews. Now, like, scroll down and look at the cover of Cookies and Cream. Scroll down. You're going up. Down. Okay. <laughs> so if you look at that, and that's actually not me, the young lady on the cover. Oh, yeah, with the, okay. with the thong But torn. you would nice. think, like, you know, also, too, the description is a Cookies and Cream is a story about a woman who was in the adult entertain entertainment industry. Okay. Which my character was. But it showed the human side of Carmen. It didn't show what people were expecting. There was no titties, wasn't no ass, wasn't no screwing. Right. Nothing like that. The most you got out of me was when I kissed Artie Fuqua, who was a co-star of mine. And I've known Artie since like '96. So he's a he's a comedian, well-known comedian. Gotcha. And so I you know, like that's my boy. So I, I'm very comfortable with Artie because I hate, and you know this from Charlie Factor. Yeah, you were going I through hate it. Kissing. You were going through on it on screen. How many right. glasses of wine did I drink before we? Several. And Mike is not even ugly. Like Mike Albin is a very attractive guy. I just don't like kissing on. It's very personal to. Now me. wait a minute. Let me ask you a question. Is it something that, like, if you were to, is it just? You don't like to see it on screen, period? Or is I don't something like that you, doing it. Gotcha. Like, I can watch other people get it, and I'm like, ooh, that's Because I sexy. hate watching kissing on screen. Really? I hate watching kissing. Well, it depends yeah. on how it's done. I don't like, you know, the, the, the tongue all the way down. Yeah, right, right, stomach. right. I don't exactly. like that. But if it's like a sexy, I don't like the, <laughs> I don't like the on-screen kissing where the tongue is, like, touching the stomach. Oh, yeah, goodness. you've seen that. <laughs> Just like, damn, like get a room. Spit. Ew! Who says spit? You said Nikki. you don't like to see spit. I don't like to oh, see I thought spit. you said you do. I was gonna be like, oh. Yeah, just like, uh, I don't, I don't. I'm, I'm mid chicken. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't like to see, I don't like to see spit because it's like that's so nasty. You see, like all of the stuff. So I said you don't watch porn. I've seen porn before, but mm -hmm. you know you don't see yeah. people, you don't see people kiss like that for but real. Are you talking about you don't like to see spit. 
<laughs> Mike pa- he got quiet. Mick passed the mic, the mic back to me. <laughs> but you know, so I mean, so oh, so you mean no, spit when your kids spit? Oh, all the other spit is good. All right, got you. She <laughs> made me speechless. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So wait a minute. So it, what does that mean exactly? So what does what mean for Chris cookies and cream? What kind of research did you oh, have to yeah, do? Oh yeah, no, no. Well, actually, and uh, she takes a sip. Coffee shot. Vodka. Oh. What Cookies and Cream was about, all right, I have bartended. I've been a bartender. I just stopped. I've been a bartender for the past 17 years. So I have bartended. Yeah, started my first bartending job was back in 96. I was 23. Was this here in Baltimore? No, it was in Jersey. Okay. I've only been in Baltimore since 2008. Okay. All right. So I've been around a lot of women in that sort of industry. Also, I know a few women that actually do webcam. Okay. They don't do it now anymore, but I, at the time right. I knew that they, you know, and she would tell me stories of how how it works is, say, like, I decided to actually do webcam. So gotcha. what I would do is I would get um, a PayPal account, okay, and I would get um, a little webcam or whatever, and then I guess I decide what house. Now, some women make a living off of this, and they have cameras all through their house. And right. Some people actually will sit back for hours and watch these women just walk through the house, take a shit, piss, right. take a shower, go cook, get into bed, sleep, fuck. You know, uh, get in front of the camera and play with themselves. Like these women, some women, like I said, have cameras set up in each and every room in their house. So I got a they friend like that. House, yeah, I got a friend. And men will log on. Men will log on and they'll just sit back and watch. And they also have a little screen at the bottom of the computer. And the, what my girlfriend was doing is she didn't have it all throughout, house, but she had. Um, she never showed her face. Like she had like a little mask, but she <clears throat> she had it in her bedroom. So when she would do her sessions, of course, like the men knew what time to log on. So they log into their account, boom, the money goes from their credit card into her PayPal. And then they she'd sit there and then she said they would type her instructions, like make an ass clap. So she'd get up in the camera, she'd make an ass clap. And they'd play with your titties and she'd play with her titties. She said one dude got on there and was like, I wanna see blood. Oh. Take a paper clip and she said, <laughs> I was like, Exit. Right. <laughs> she kicked him out the room because also too the women that have these webcams have the power. They run the rooms, oh, so if something gets uncomfortable, they can kick the person out. Oh, okay. And not be the man's not reimbursed. He's just you know. So. Shout but if up. women it depends on you know if he wants to see her do uh, dildo play, uh, you know take your fingers to get up your ass. Anything like they they give them instructions, and if the woman that's in front of the webcam decides to do it, right. they do it. So a webcam could be, you know, anything. So I, like I said, I knew, I've, I know a lot of women that, strippers, I know a lot of women who are professional entertainers. Right. Um, and like I said, bartending in a couple of gentlemen's clubs, I have seen a lot Got gotcha. you. So you're pretty much har- harkening on your experiences so, there. Yeah, just knowing, yeah, so I was able gotcha. to pull from that. And also, too, the thing that was cool with Cookies and Cream is it showed the human side of Carmen. It showed her with... It showed hints of her work. You never saw skin, though. So it showed she had a daughter. She showed her. Uh, it showed her um, relationship with her parents at home, her daughter, at the end. And it's funny because my daughter, when she was eight years old, actually played my daughter in a movie. And now oh, my nice. daughter Jay looks like mom. I look weird because she's fourteen now, so she's like a little lady, and she's all into herself and her look. I look strange. I don't like it. I don't like looking at that. You know. But right. <laughs> But she be like and so uh but she did a great job. She was only eight. I took her in the bathroom and gave her some instructions. We came out on set and she killed it. Right. Like she so um but yeah, that was pretty and then it showed her relationship with men and how like a lot of men would you know, like if you came across a woman and she said, Yeah, you know, I do porn, you probably wouldn't treat her the best. You probably right. might, you know. Yeah. So she kinda was in this dilemma where this man who she really liked and wanted to settle down with want uh settle down with he she hid it from him until like at the end it was revealed and then like he did what she thought he was gonna do and he kinda like flipped out on it was like oh, I can't believe it you know so Yeah well let me ask you a question about that. I mean being that you worked as a bartender, mm-hmm. is that still does that stigma still uh apply to you too? Being that you work at a at a gentleman's club before Well see no because when I did let it be known that I worked at a gentleman's club, they knew I was just bartender. Right. I let it be known straight up, like, yeah, no, I just make the drinks. Gotcha. And the thing with the bartenders is um, you can wear any, depending on what the club, usually for the majority, for the most part, we wore jeans and, like, wife beaters. Gotcha. Or if the girls wanted to be a little bit, like, sexier, they'd wear, like, boy shorts or, like, yoga shorts with some fishnets and a wife beater. But it was never, you were never dressed like the girl because you have to realize that, 
a lot of men, and I hear this all the time when I was working there, um, sometimes the dudes would come and sit at the bar and be like, you know, oh, okay, I'm bored with her. She didn't show her cooch. You know, wow. she's naked, and now so now the man wants to come and sit at the bar and beat us in the head all night because he doesn't seem what he wants to see off of her. It's more of a mystery with the bartender. The bartenders. Right. So it's like I come here, I see this bitch naked all the damn time, and she busted wide open for a dollar. Screw her. That's how talk it to is, you. though. That's yeah. how it is. I mean, sometimes right, that's the, how, yeah. the, some of the bartenders are the baddest women in the dag on club. Yeah, so they would, you know, at one point when you were just like, all right, get out of here to the customer, he, of course, go back to where he came, you know, to the girls or he leave. But, right. yeah, a lot of times dudes would be like, oh, you know, we'd rather associate or we'd rather talk to you guys and blah, blah, blah. So, right. so it was never a stigma because we were not. You know, right? Gotcha. Yeah, so, gotcha. So it's, it's a lot. You you get you get a pass, I guess, being a bartender because you're in there working. And right. You, your dollars. You still got your clothes on, and all you're doing is making drinks. Gotcha. You're not making drinks and going up on the stage and clapping and then come back and <laughs> make right. another drink, pour beer, and then go up and clap your ass some more. It's not like that. It's well, a, I mean, I don't I don't want to harken too much on this, <laughs> but uh, that would be yeah, dope though. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get that top off that beer? Oh, um, but no, my um, I don't want to. <laughs> talk too much about this but I want but uh so whatever you want to know there's always drama in the strip club is that past you being a bartender or do you get sucked into it oh no see I don't I don't I don't play around I'm not a drama person right I'm not going to be in the middle of bullshit I have seen it's about it's up to you as a person if you want to get sucked into that it's easy to especially if you're friends with it with some of the dancers and if she has beef then you know then she beefing and you say right. oh I'll, I'll fuck you up bitch and then they're like i'll fuck yeah. you bitch and then the bartender like, well that's my girl and fuck right. you and then you get oh, hit side head foot with a pumpkin are fighting you know in the so it's up to you i've <laughs> right. never i've right. never been in any sort of because i'm not a dramatic i don't like drama right so i'll be quick to be like man go ahead i'm not yeah but yeah you know, <laughs> yeah. I, told you I, knew Kung, I do not know Kung Fu. <laughs> I wish. I Although wish. I've, I've seen her fight in a movie, uh, Singer Skip, Weekday Singer. So, yeah, moving on. <laughs> so, so uh, no webcam, and you can see her face right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. You saw Senior Cut Day? I was there at the premiere. Sold right. out in like 10 oh. minutes. Woo. Okay. Um,. People who are in the theater are the worst when it comes to. I don't like working with people that are theater based. I really don't. Because they are. What so, do you no, mean? no. Not a, the women. Very deep. Oh, put it like this. Oh. I did Senior Cut Day. Yeah. The the script. You, so, you know, so, you know, Corey. Okay. Corey was excited. Alvin was excited. I was excited because there was supposed to be a big fight scene at the end. Now, how I am is I believe in total is natural make the scene look as realistic as possible now i understand i can't just walk up on you and clock you in the note you know in the eye and give you a black eye we're filming i understand that <laughs> but there's ways to tussle around and there's ways to emulate it yeah. without it being too stage looking because in real life if somebody is coming after you to whoop your ass or kill you they're coming at you you have no time to say wait a minute yeah, yeah. Stop. so we're going to make it look like this. You know what I'm saying? So this chick, Dana, I do not know the girl's last name. She pissed me off. And I ended up kneeing her for real. You weren't on set. But every, and I was like, need oh, just, her? I need her. She pissed me Jersey. off. Jersey. <laughs> <No, she, laughs> um, and it wasn't hard, but it was because what happened was, so we go to do the set. So now I'm like, oh, yes, we're about to film the set. Me and, and me and the, my, my, my character, Tora, is about to fight the main character. We're about to get it in. I'm thinking she was going to be down with it. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, one thing I told, I don't know if you heard, overheard me, but when I told Rich, when we do the, the scene in um, White Paper, when my character comes across the dude for the first time, like, I'll tell the director, look, Tell the actor, do not be afraid. Like, rough me up. Like, yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah. Let's make this scene. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's make this scene as realistic, realistic as possible. Yeah, yeah. Like, if I have bruises and bumps from previous, like Princeton Hall will tell you, I'll, I'll get a scar and a bump in a minute. I love it. I think it's, you know, I call it my battle scars. Okay. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. it's, you're making art. Like, let's, uh, let's get yeah, dirty. Yeah, let's you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, let's jack each other up. God, <laughs> choke me. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Look at Nikki's <laughs> face. It was joke. <laughs> nice. <laughs> anyway, it's a joke, God. <laughs> Nikki. First of all, I my, keep making my, 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 <laughs> Nikki. I go to like, church I, I, every I, Sunday, guys. <laughs> don't believe what they're trying to put through. 
I was this merely was just listening to this moment, story. Nikki. <laughs> I was listening to the story. <laughs> all right, so so I'm excited. I got my hair's all wild. I got my tattered, dirty clothes on. I'm ready to bring Tora to life. I'm ready to let, let's go, bitch. You know, let's go fight. So we <laughs> go to, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm amped. I'm all like, oh yes. So we get by the, you know, Corey sets up and Alvin sets up, and we're ready to go. Mm-hmm. And this chick stops every. Okay, I don't know if oh, you've boy. ever done chore- choreographed fighting. I'm like, no. What is that? <laughs> I just do the go. scene. <laughs> like, let's go. Let's go. No, okay, so what's going to happen is, is okay, so because the way the camera, if the director knows how to hold the camera, it's going to look like you're really hitting me, but you're going to stand like five feet away from me. I bullshit you not. You're going to stand like five feet away from me, and you're going to go like this. And she's telling me how to, and when you go to kick me, you have to kind of hold back at arm's length, and then you bring your knee up at an angle. And every time we would try to do the scene, it just, it looked staged. Yeah. Corey's getting annoyed. Alvin's getting annoyed. I'm getting annoyed. Now I'm coming out of my I'm coming out of my element. Uh-oh. The jersey so is kept, coming out. No, no, no. She was taking me out of I'm like, I can't. I'm saying oh, myself okay. like You're she's trying to stay in I'm character. I'm trying to stay in character and, and I'm trying to do this choreographed yeah. bullshit because yeah, she, yeah, she yeah, yeah. doesn't want me to hit her. And it's like cuz I I was thinking like, yeah, we're going to like play talk, like, you know, yeah, grab no, you yeah, up and yeah. throw you around a little bit. You weren't going around. really. You were giving her just a little yeah, I was going to try she would she was, I guess she was scared. I don't know if she looked at me and was like, I don't want this bitch hitting me. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> I was, you know, like, I wasn't going to, you know, like, give her a black eye, nothing for real. But I was, you know, like, same thing. Like, don't, you know, I want I want it to be as realistic as possible. It's yeah. making me angry. So then, <laughs> so then at one point I just was like, and I, you know, oh, I'm sorry. Then she's like, oh, ow. <laughs> no, like, can we repeat? Can we get a repeat <laughs> of, the, of the reaction? Yeah, that, oh, the, Ow. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Oh, I'm sorry. Did I? I didn't mean to do that." And I was like, "On inside, like, bitch, you, you gonna stop, <laughs> stop <laughs> and shit, and let's go. Let's do the scene." So you know, right. so and she was theater, very diva, very diva ish, and I don't. That's not your style, to be. I'm like, not. Oh, no, I mean, uh-huh, like, if we're there to uh-huh. do a scene and we gotta bring something to life, to court is like, oh, stop, do do right. that. Get hit me. Look like you're hitting me. Is that normal though? Fun. Is I've it, never done a choreographed well, fight. What I'm saying, as far as like the diva attitude towards actors, is that like a normal occurrence? Oh, I, I, there are some people that can be diva ish. Right. And it's just, and, Guys and, and a lot of people do not, they won't, a lot of people won't say it, but like the director, it rubs the director wrong, it rubs the crew wrong. Like you'll actually kind of be ostracized from the group. Right. And they'll be like, so and so, we are not fucking with her no more after this project. Yeah, because anything that if people don't know about like movie sets and stuff like that, it's all about energy. And the synergy with the cast, and yes. if that one person's there messing it up, yeah, it just changed the whole and mood of everything. Talk now, they may not say anything to you because they want the rest of the shoot to go well, right? But it's duly noted that we will not be calling you back, right? Yeah, dudes too. I've come across a, a couple of dudes that think they are the greatest thing since sliced bread, and yeah. the director's yeah. like, for the most part, people like humility. I mean, I'm not saying you you have to be like a geisha, like oh yes. Whatever you say, right? You know, but he's <laughs> like, <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like right. people don't, you know. So you, you just you have to be personable. Yeah, that's what anything though, actually. Yeah, even yeah, on a job, even like a regular nine yeah. to five people. When you got like a shitty attitude, and I'm I'm so great, and you know, worship me, and you just like right. Oh. Well, let me ask you a question. Um, <laughs> from from your, this is gonna be good for me. But from your perspective as an actress, mm-hmm. have you ever seen a movie that you like? Well, dang, I thought it was gonna go a lot different than what this, what I thought in the what editing room. Once you see the final edit of the production of whatever of the video of the movie, mm-hmm. did you go back and like? I didn't think it was gonna turn out like that. So, a movie I've been in. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and I am not going to say the name of the film because, no, because right. I actually asked this person to take my real name out of it. And wow. And I put a fake name on it because it was a movie that was filmed in Michigan. And um, like, I'm not going to say any names, but, um, and you, you, they're from like, uh, Jer- they're from New York. Okay. <clears throat> but originally it was a storyline of me and this young lady were supposed to play sisters. <laughs> and the young lady actually happened to be the girlfriend of the director. Gotcha. And the whole entire week we spent 10 days in Michigan, and everything seemed like it was going to go great. And I was looking forward to um, seeing the film. 
And then when I finally got my DVD cut, right? Because the predominant, I was put it like this: I was the only darker face on the film. Everybody else was white. Gotcha. And they ended up making me look like the angry black, black chick. chick. Yeah. And I and because because he kept saying to me because one thing I do <clears throat> is as we're filming if I, whatever set I'm on and that even if some like for example Rich. Say we're all working on something. And right. I'll go to Rich and I'll say, Rich, he'll say, cut, we're done with the scene. I'll go to Rich and I'll say, Rich, um, you know, is, is it good? Do you need me to redo something? Do you need me to do something different? He'd be like, no, no, I make sure I ask. So the whole entire time, I'm asking the director guy, I'm like, you know, when we finished the uh, scene, I was like, Yo, was that good? Do you need me to redo? Oh, no, no, we're fine. Oh, no. He was saying, he, the way he wanted me to portray my character was I was more of a subdued. Like my character was, was right. very chill, laid back, subdued. Right. And he, the way he cut it, and we had over, <clears throat> we had over 170 hours worth of, because it was 10 days that we shot. Wow. And we would shoot for like 12 hours each day, so we had hella footage. Footage. Right. So for him to pick the shit he picked, now he made his girlfriend look like. Perfect. Perfect. Right. My shit, I was just like, oh, and then I saw it, I said, you're not going to put this shit in the fucking film festivals with my real name attached to this shit. You can forget it. Right. I said, so. I said, I will give you the money because I was paid for it. I said, like, I'll give you the money back. I have no problem. It's still in the bank. I will send you the check back. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. Just, you know, tell me what you want done. I said, just change my name. Do not have my real stage name on this. So I gave some, I made up some crazy name. And I said, put this on. The, do not put right. Jason Cole on this shit. I said, because I, re no, no, do not. You're not going to fucking get it. Because, I, for example, <clears throat> a director and how it's edited can fuck you up. Oh, absolutely. For example, Halle Berry and Catwoman. Oh yeah, that was a, that was a bad one. And Halle Berry is good. I like Halle. Yeah. She brings it. Yeah. Catwoman was it was editing and how they just. Yeah, I was uh, gonna ask, like, what, what would you say? What would you say was the main thing that really killed that? That I mean, I un there's what? so many different ways that Catwoman could have been killed, but right. Like, what was the main thing? The like, number one thing that really killed it was it just the script or it just. I think it was the script and the in the in the editing and how he maybe directed her because I've heard and I haven't I haven't experienced it yet and I'm hoping I don't I hear that there are some directors that say I want you to say it exactly the words exactly how it's on the paper do not change it in some ways you know like as if you are saying how do I want to put it if you are say you're on set and the mm -hmm. camera's rolling and mm -hmm. you're saying your lines. Mm -hmm. The way it's written sometimes can seem very unnatural. And okay. it can seem like yeah. you wouldn't really, nobody talks like that. But mm -hmm. some directors are so like I stubborn. Angle, They're like, no, yeah, you're going to yeah. say it just like this. So when they film it, and no matter how you say it, no matter how you do your tone of voice, no matter how you try to come at it, it's going to sound stupid. And some mm -hmm. people are like, I exact, do not change nothing. I want it verbatim, word by word. I have been blessed to have <laughs> come across directors that actually are actor oriented they work with you okay. and say okay you know if it sounds a little like when you say it and it doesn't feel natural change it but make sure you know make sure you stay in the you know you stay in the vicinity of what so, yeah. the idea is but you can change it up to kind of you know and it usually feels better feels more natural but there are some directors that are just like like if he says um oh my god brian got shot or you know right. he wants you to say it just like that you can't say Damn, that nigga got Damn, shot. Damn, Brian got shot. <laughs> right. Damn, my boy got shot. Or Brian got shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he wants, yeah. You have to say it like this. Yeah. Cut. You didn't say it like I told you to say it. So it, Have you heard, like, <laughs> uh, like, uh, like, would you say that's probably the best way to go about it? Like, if you're writing a script, like, giving the script is more like a framework of what you're trying to convey, but let right. the actors kind of yes. kind of do their thing. Yes. Like, do you think that's a better way to yes, kind of go? Yes, because certain about? things, like, like the word baby. I hate saying the word baby. Cause I don't say baby, right. I say babe, honey, oh, okay. something like that. that makes sense. Baby is like, hey baby. Now some, yeah, now some people sound good saying it, but like someone like myself, certain words just don't sound. They don't roll off my tongue well. No matter how I try to flip it, I could even try to put a word in front. It just certain words just doesn't sound right coming from me. Right. So if I try to, if it's in a line, I try to. And I'm just like, and I can feel it. I can hear it. I'm like, I, I don't care what you say. I know it's going to sound terrible. It's going to sound terrible and look terrible, you know. So there's other words you can use, other pet names you can use. But it's just like so certain, you know, but there's some people that be like, no, baby's in the script and you're going to say baby. Oh, man. And you're going to like it. 
<laughs> you know, so <laughs> say baby, you know, <laughs> you're just like, say hi, now. baby. And then it's like, then the movie comes out and you're just like, mm. oh, no, uh, <laughs> boo, uh, <laughs> two stars. Uh, cut, cut to the director jacking off in the room. She said my word. <laughs> she said my word. Oh, yes. <laughs> right, 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 right. So. <laughs> right. The BTS. <laughs> right, exactly. the BTS. Put this in my stash. <laughs> this whole, this, you know, whole bunch of girls, baby, baby, oh, yes, babies. Like, like, yes. <laughs> he's like, yes, I so edit you know just I mean? full of babies, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like some people sound good saying it, but it's like you know, like right. everybody doesn't. You know, it's not. If it's not natural sounding, it's not natural sounding. I don't yeah. care how you, you. No matter. Yeah. Character. I mean, playing, trying to play that character. You're right. Still bringing, playing that character, you're still bringing yourself through that character so that's why those words really matter like right. you know like even though you're playing the character like i'm trying to get you to be this character yeah. it's kind of like because like even when i see denzel i'm going to see denzel play <laughs> the character you know it's kind of you know what i mean so it's kind of like you're not just getting the character it's kind of yeah let me yeah, i get what he's saying that. but you have to get to a certain level like a de niro to get to that point where De Niro's gonna play. I mean, I, De Niro's amazing. he's amazing. I'm in awe of it. Like, I think, like, I it's very hard for me to be starstruck. But there's like three main people that if I saw them, I may be a little jittery. I get it together. Who are we get talking my about together. here? Who are we talking about? Prince. Prince. <laughs> we got his boots on there. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna say. <laughs> and plays basketball very well. <laughs> yeah, he does. No, he actually does. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I don't believe yeah. it. I don't believe no, it. They I, no, they got paid. He was on. Afro. Yeah, he was on a basketball team. What is he, from Michigan? He's from. He's Michigan. from. No, no he's Minnesota. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah they got him like. But yeah, Robert De Niro and um, oh, what's her name? Julianne Moore. Because yeah. I think she's such a great actress. So, but I mean, if I see, I would probably, be like, oh, you know, she wouldn't. I, of course, I'd get it together. Like I said, all three of them. Right. You know, I would be like, I, you know, I have to turn and be like, oh, hey, how are you? Do you know, but more. But because she's 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 great. She's to me, she's one of the greats. Wow. Yeah, I have a few others, but those are like the three. You know, like, but if you are great at what you do, yeah. And I have like a very high level of respect. So for Denzel's you, not like, on that list. Denzel's a beast um, now. Uh -huh. De no, Denzel is a beast. Yeah, he's good. No, I would definitely be like, oh, shit, Denzel, son. I would, you know, but, you know, but um, I don't think I would be as, I think I love Denzel, and I think right. he's a great actor. He's had his flops, who everybody has, but, like, De Niro and Denzel is kind of like, like, De Niro. What about Al Pacino? Like, number one flop. Who's Mickey number asked, flop? well, Mickey, because he's not getting on the mic. He Denzel? wants to be a jerk. Who's, who's Denzel? What was Denzel's number one flop? What was you Um... Say? Glory. No. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> what is the name of the movie? Uh, it had the song uh, "Time Is on My Side." He, it was like a. It was a story of a demon passing. Oh, you're talking about uh, "Fallen." Fallen. That wasn't that great. Did you like Fallen? Fallen. I do, but it was not his great. Like it was kind of eh, chintzy. I, I could, I could, yeah. Back to the mic, Mick. Yeah, well, let me hold the mic now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fa Fallen. I could. I could go with. I mean, that. I can watch it. You know, like I think the movie Angel Heart was probably one of De Niro's biggest flops. He played Luke. You never saw Angel Heart? That is a fucking classic. Matter of fact, I'm a, you're going to say, oh, do you remember when um, the Cosby show was on? Yeah. And do you remember when Bill Cosby and uh, Lisa Bonet had a falling out because of a movie she did? Yeah. That's the movie. Hold up. Not, wait, wait, wait. Not, that's had not, Mickey Rourke in it. it was that's in, not the one she's in a tub naked, is it? Yeah, she was like, and also too, they had a, a raunchy ass sex scene in Chicken Blood, and Mickey Rourke fucked the shit out of Lisa Bonet on the screen, with Chicken Blood pouring on them because it was a movie. <laughs> one of my, I love Angel Heart as a whole because it's wow. like it's like a cult classic. Okay. But um, De Niro, Rob De Niro, he had like this long straight wig on. He had like these long nails. He played a character called Louis Cipher. He was actually Lucifer. It was based in New Orleans, and Mickey Rourke was this. Um, what he was, I'm like, he was a detective, but he was like a salesman or something. And he was drawn to New Orleans to find, he was trying to figure out who this guy was, mm -hmm. name uh, something Hart, Mickey Hart or something like that. And then it all tied in together, Lisa Bonet ended up being his daughter. At the end, he killed Lisa Bonet, he had like shoved a gun up her snatch. He's like, you didn't see it, you didn't see the gun. But it was all like voodoo and you, you saw it, right? 
I just saw that one scene. <laughs> way to, you need to watch the whole Way movie. to ruin the movie for us, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's, it's really good. It's, it's a good, it's a cult classic because it's like, but to me, you know, like, he didn't really have too much to go. He's playing the devil, so he could only do so much. But to me, that's like as far as like real, like, good Robert De Niro, like Raging Bull, Taxi Driver. Wasn't yeah, that De Niro? Yeah, yeah. It was like a, oh, I decided to play this role and get this check. Yeah. So I'm going to play it as well as I can. I think but. my favorite De Niro role is probably uh, Casino. Yes, that's, that's Sam Rothstein. Yeah, Casino's yes. good. Yes, yeah, that's, he has a lot of good movies. Like one of my favorite Robert De Niro movies is The Awakenings. I've seen it over 20 times and still cry. The Awakenings? No, Awakenings. Awakenings. It has Robert William, <clears throat> Robin Williams in it. Oh, okay. And Robin, Robert De Niro plays a patient. It's a, I forget what it's based on a true story. Okay. But Robert De Niro is in a hospital and it's a floor of full of these patients. It's like a disease that debilitates you almost where you're vegetable like. No. So Robin De Niro, Robin Williams plays a doctor that comes up with this drug and it breaks them out of their lethargic shells and they live life a little bit and then they, the drug stops working and it starts to bring them back down to where they were and Robert De Niro's like fighting this. But he, he ends up succumbing back, suc- you know, succumbing back to the, the disease because the medicine didn't work. Yeah. It is such a beautiful movie. And it's just like, oh, tearjerker. I've seen it over 20 times and I still bawl every time I see the movie. I love Heat. I thought Heat was a great movie. I wasn't crazy about Heat. You didn't like Heat? Yeah, I had out. But you know, Rob De Niro, Val Kilmer in it. Three greats, but I just it did not latch on. Well, Val Kilmer, I, it's a funny thing. He's not thing as great with him. as Robert De Niro now. And you know he does not comedy. Even now. Oh, no, you kidding Ooh. me now? You kidding me now? Val Kilmer is have not. You not well, have hold you up. not seen? Have you not seen Top Gun? That's some great stuff in that movie. I didn't say, what, but what I'm saying is Val Kilmer is not on the level of Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. He's gotten Sorry. kind of big too. He's been eating. I heard he was chunky. Yeah. I haven't seen him lately. Yeah, he's, well, he's been always in a, in a fifty movie. Every 50 movie that he does, and then Val Kilmer seems to be somewhere around. Wait, did he play character. Batman? Yeah. We're did gonna he play avoid Batman? that from his. <laughs> we're gonna avoid but he didn't that. Play Batman? Yeah, oh against the Joker God. and Two Face, that was him. Yeah. I wasn't crazy about that one. Now the yeah. Michael Keaton will always be Batman to me. Oh yeah. That dude. Yeah, Michael Keaton's the man. Michael Keaton. Is no, the no, no. He doesn't no. even make movies Christian anymore. I'm so Bale. angry. He's in a movie. Uh, yeah. he was just in. Michael Keaton. Yeah, he was just in something. I'm going to need a name for that. He was just in something recently. Let me look. Oh, let's yes, go please. back to. Because I love Michael Keaton. He probably doesn't even look. I heard he, doesn't, he doesn't look the same at all. Uh, uh, you no, know who not. does not look like themselves anymore? Who's that? Mickey Rourke. I'm so mad that he got that yeah, plastic surgery. Yeah. You why know? would you do that? I, no, I love Mickey Rourke. Yeah, I love Mickey Rourke. But, like, why did you do that to yourself, Mickey Rourke? Yeah, he was in the other guys. That's the la- that's the, the one. The other guys. The other Michael guys. Michael Keaton. Yeah, he was. What in year that. was this? 2010. I thought he was in something really? recently. Yeah. Yeah, he, no, he's about to come out with something, I believe. He is. He's got Toy, Toy Story guys. Four. He's gonna be a, yeah the other guys. What is who who was in that? That's what uh. He's in RoboCop. Yeah, RoboCop. The other guys is um, what's uh, Will Ferrell. And, and uh, Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Was it a big role? Yeah. Well, no, I don't know. I never saw the movie. I just know he was in something. Um, he, he was. He was the. Uh, yeah, he was the chief, uh, chief detective or chief the the guy that they had to answer to. It was pretty fun. Pretty fun. But it, it was not Wait, the see. Michael Keaton of old. It, it wasn't that situation. Um, he still looks the same a little bit. Yeah. yeah. This no, my that's Michael Keaton. That's Michael Keaton. He yeah, looks. That, it's the that's exact like the same 90s. face. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, yeah it's right from the nineties though. That's not a recent picture. <laughs> well, he's picture. always had that hairline, though. Michael Keaton oh, yeah, always yeah, had yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. extended gulf of hair yeah. with the little fluff over top. Yeah. So, so if you could, cool. so if you could be with any any actor in the movie, who would it be? Huh? If you could be with any actor in the and you guys are going to make a movie, who would you oh, have? Oh, I thought at? you meant like doing. I was like, I just told you, I don't like them kind of scenes. Okay, <laughs> I'm, no, no, I'm gonna ask you that. If you could have a sex scene with any actor, who would it be? One actor. No. You wouldn't do it. No. No actor. I don't like. I do not like. I do not like. Who would be your body? Emulating. Double? Yeah, who would be your body though? Oh, thing. whoever the hell, the, whoever the hell doesn't mind being groped on. I don't, you know, whoever. You gotta make sure she has long curly hair. Though. Hey, look, if they yeah. can find a body double, as long as I ain't gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> I really like. I'm be like. I'm. You can ask Rich. You can ask Princeton Hall. You said I hate it. That was not an act. I wait a minute. I've stand. seen you in scenes before. I've seen you in the car scene. 
I hated uh, that scene too. <laughs> Ask Rich. I hated that. And I see you in the to- bathroom scene too. What bathroom scene? It was a shower scene. We had full clothes on and there was no lips touching. So even in that. Now there was black tape over my boob. Right. So you couldn't see it. It was just to look like. So it was even in that situation. Now, see, that- he wasn't touching me. Right. And he wasn't like, I, okay, we could hug and all that. And right. We could say, yeah. So I, that doesn't you bother see you. see silhouette, yeah. Okay. But like full blown, like. Ah, ah. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, 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 and kissing and then. No, no. Gotcha. No. Sound effect. All right. <laughs> so. I, I hate, I hate, you know. So I mean, but we could like. Okay, like I just, uh, we're not done filming it, but Butterfly Chases, which is in pre- uh, post production, it's still being done. So we're still in pre production. It's not pre production because it's in production. It's in production. In production. Okay. There we go. And me and Jay Paris are in the bed together, and it's supposed to be after we just had sex. Gotcha. So we're laying, and we got covers over. Now I have underneath the covers, I have on a wife beater, but it's pulled down, so it's like a, a tube right. top. Right. So it looks like you're new. So it looks like we're naked, but we're gotcha. not. Gotcha. So I don't have a problem playing the after scene. So has anybody <laughs> I'll like play uh, before and after? Just, but the door, I do not want no parts of the door. Has it ever got? <laughs> has it ever got weird with you and the actor like afterwards? Like, because we've never. It's called I, I don't go that. <laughs> yeah, I don't right. go that far. And I, you know, uh, now have I ever been like attracted to anybody I've worked with? Yeah. Like to the point, like relationship wise, no. Right, but there is an attraction there sometimes. I mean, you might yeah. be like, hey, that that guy's attractive or whatever. Well, yeah, I mean, like yeah, he looks good, but I mean, it's not like. That's still not enough to make me want to be like, oh, I want to right, right, right. A do right. it scene with you, nothing right. like that. I hate that. It's so just, I hate it. Like I don't know. Why, let's, why are you laughing, Nikki? <laughs> Nikki just. <laughs> Nikki's like, <laughs> no, it's the way. It's the, it's the way. It's the way that you. It's the way that you're very specific about it. It's just right. I can tell that you're very. You know, you're particular about. <laughs> That yeah, particular thing. You, yeah, you're I don't kinda, like uh, it. I just uh, don't uh, like it. And it was yeah, funny because also, too, it's very awkward because a lot of people think like, oh, because I've seen some very sexy movie scenes where you're just like, oh, my God, you know. But what people fail to realize is you have the director there, yeah. lighting, camera, yeah. crew. Everybody it's like 30 you. motherfuckers in a room with you. Yeah. There's nothing sexy about, you know, that. And now, if you are in a relationship with somebody, now say me and my fiance happen to be, okay, yeah, that's different. Because we're and I would just zone out and just do what you know what we do. But like with Mr. And Mrs. Smith, I heard that Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, but they were on the verge of becoming an item. So that's totally different. Mm-hmm. Like they liked each other. They was digging. They was fucking out. They was doing sex scenes outside, <laughs> outside the movie. So that's different. But if it's like y'all, are just, it's 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 strange yeah. if it's just my co-star, not my man slash co-star. Yeah, I feel you. On you know that. what I mean? I so feel it's you just, on that. It's just terrible. I do not like it. Mm. So let's start from the beginning. So where are you from exactly? I am from Patterson, New Jersey, originally. Okay. Nice. Nice. <laughs> so let's talk about, I mean, so early on, you know, you're in Patterson. How long mm. did you stay in Patterson? Uh, what high school did you go to? Oh, okay. What did um, you do in high school? Well, my father moved us to Huntsville, Alabama when I was about seven, going on eight. Okay. And then we stayed there, and then uh, I'd say about my mother sent me back to, I did, like, school. <clears throat> and then after ninth grade, because I, I started ninth grade down south in a school called uh, John, J.O. Johnson High School, which is in Huntsville, Alabama. And then I was like, well, Ma, you know, I haven't been up north at all. I want to, you know, spend time with the family, and I would like to go to school up there. So that was 11th grade, but I'm sorry, I'm, I missed 10th grade. 10th grade, we moved to Detroit. And I went to high school in Detroit, 10th grade, and I still clearly to this day remember that I got mugged. Wow. And my chain, do you know what a box link is? The real skinny box link? Like you got to take a magnifying glass and look at it, (laughs) see that it's a box and it's linked. (laughs) So I'm walking to school and it was a beautiful, it was a picture perfect day. We lived on a street called Pelkey and I was going to Osborne High School. So I'm walking down Seven Mile and I remember it's a long, it's a straight street with hella cars on both sides, like a main drag. You got two lanes, like almost like a four lane highway, but it's two lanes going this way, two lanes going the other right. way. So it's sunny, birds is chirping, you, you know, I'm walking to school, you know, it's like, oh, it's a half day. School, school was about to be out. My best gotcha. friend, Kenyana, was, was, she was a great hire than me. So n- my mother had just taken me and Yana to the mall and we had gotten one of those pendants to break in half, best friend pendants. Oh. 
So I'm walking, you know, and like in order to see this chain, you got to really, you know, the sun yeah. either had to hit my neck or something. So I see this man way down the street. And he's about this small. Like that's how far away he was. Right. So he's getting closer and closer to me. He's far away by the folks. He's far, like way <laughs> right. down the street. Right. And so he like we walk in like how sometimes you're trying to avoid somebody. So both y'all are kind of moving together. Right. So we're doing the, you know, he comes up on me and I'm trying oh, to dancing. move. And, gotcha. Yeah. So then he says to me, he says, give me your, now I've never been robbed. I'm not into the violent life. Nothing. You know, I'm, I'm 10th grade. I don't know any better. So he's like, give me your chain. And I'm like, what? I'm not giving you my chain. So he starts doing this in my collar. So I'm grabbing his hand like, what are you doing? Get out. He's like, if you don't give me your chain, I'm going to punch you in your shit. And I said, what? He was like, he right in my ear and knocked the wind out. Wow. Why are you laughing, Mickey? I was 10 in 10th grade. Are you serious? You laughing. Mickey done ain't shit. He anyway. Ain't. He um, <laughs> niggas and got to his head. He's, I'm, I'm glad to see that you get joy out of 10th graders getting popped sorry, in their shit. And that's why your Chick fil A juice I'm just sorry. fell. Mickey, explain yourself. I'm sorry. It was, I didn't expect you to say that you were going to really get punched. I didn't expect I that. I didn't expect it I either. Didn't expect <laughs> that. Go ahead, Mercy, yeah. on the person that punched yeah. you. Well, no, he punched me in my chest, though. And he made, I lost, I was like, because <gasps> he hit me, you he know, gave like, you a you, man move. That's yeah, a man move. Because if you hit somebody in their chest, like in the sternum, it knocks the wind out of them. I can't believe so. Really when serious. I gasped, this nigga pop, like I said, the chain was little as hell. He just took his fingers like, pop, and so I knew he was a crackhead because and I'm looking at my cat on a dirty jogging suit. But my mm. ch- now in Detroit, they are very gaudy. They have huge like they'll oh, yeah, rock that's that pimp. bones. That's that pimp they'll tan. wear like dinner plate medallions. The dudes, I BS you not in the in the um. Phone book in Detroit, there is at least a three inch thick section of hair salons and places to go get your hair done. Men are walking around with no. three foot, they'll have like no, the hard no waves, no. spray painted with rhinds. So I'm, no, no, no. Yes. Pimped out. With the nails <laughs> done and everything. I, not the nails, but they the men's hair is sometimes laid better than the women's hair. And Detroit is all about hair. Like, you could have on a $1 outfit, and as long as your hair is laid. And I don't mean, like, nice and kept nice, like a nice cut and nice, right. you keep your dreads nice and silky. I'm talking about some. Yeah. The towering. Got a style going on. Yeah. Not even, not even you can't even swing it. It's, it's cr- crunchy because of all the spray and shit and the color. Yeah, because they'll, it's finger waves. Like, But this was, I was, this is back in 93, though, when I was in, not 93, I'm sorry, 92 when I was in 10th grade. Like, 91, 92 when I was, like, in 10th grade. This is what I saw. So I can only imagine what it's like now. <laughs> Probably not that much. They in, they in bankruptcy. Times are hard in Detroit now. So but listen, know. it was bad back then. Like oh. I'm surprised they're just now claiming it. Detroit was like a, it was a messy, dirty city then, too. We wow. just happened to live. My mother just made sure. My mother was like, she did not like hood area. Like, I don't either. Like, I don't. The place has to be somewhat decent. It cannot be a hood area. I right. don't. I like peace and quiet. I don't like having to worry about somebody coming in my shit in the middle of the night, you know. And that can happen anywhere, but in a more hood, urban, you know, crime-ridden area, that's going to happen quicker than Absolutely. some place that's a little bit more settled. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was mugged when I was in 10th grade. And oh, then so, <laughs> um, <laughs> Mickey Shake his head like, wow. Don't try to make up for it now, motherfucker. You actually <laughs> laughed at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mick messed up, man, um, laughing at 10th grade right. sorrow. That's all right. That's no, cool. you know, cool. you know what? It, 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 it's hard out there in the D, man. It is. It it's is. hard out there in the it D. Is. I mean, so, so I make mean, Kilpatrick. It's, it's so cold, cold in the D. D. See, you ain't lying. Um, and then 11th grade, I went to um, Kennedy High School, which is actually the, you guys saw Lean On Me, right? Oh, God. So that was Eastside. Kennedy was the rival of Eastside. Oh, okay. So. Gotcha. Kennedy, I mean, Eastside was like. Did you know Joe Clark? No, he was already <laughs> he'd already left. Um, but put a train on the door. <laughs> so put it like this: It's like I liked Kennedy because Kennedy was like the the more like unhood school. Gotcha. You know, yeah. So, but Kennedy and Eastside were like rivals. Like, oh, you go to Kennedy, I don't like you. Oh, you go to Eastside, I don't like you. you right. Know, dumb ri- high school rivalry stuff. And then I decided to go back um, down south to the same school I started ninth grade in, which was J O Johnson. Uh, did a lot of moving around. Yeah, yeah. And then finally, um, my mom passed in 93, 
And then I moved back to Jersey because I was like, I can't stay down south anymore. Too many bad memories. Gotcha. So then I moved back to Jersey, I'd say 90, late 94, 95 ish. Okay. And then I've been in Jersey ever since. And then. Yeah. Right. And then moved around to Jersey. I was in Patterson. Then I moved to Jersey City, then Bayonne. And I pretty much. Uh, majority of my daughter's life she was in Bayonne Bayonne is a beautiful city like if you moved to Jersey never been go to Bayonne like if I ever was gonna move back to Jersey I would run back to Bayonne like okay. no question it's love Bayonne it's weird because I always had like a bad notion about New Jersey I always think it's like no no uh, no mm. and, and it's, it's, I mean it depends on where you go it depends on where you go you have some very Patterson yeah Patterson is I would not move back to Patterson yeah no I, I, I have a still have family in Patterson Woo. Patterson is very very it's bad it's always been bad but it's gotten like very it's gotten worse but like this newark used to be badder than patterson and now patterson is giving newark a run for its money because they're actually trying to gentrify newark so they're trying uh, to make yeah. newark into like yeah you know like highfalutin so mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like every time I went to Jersey. I, I enjoyed myself. I was in Plainfield when I was up. Yeah, there. Plainfield is nice too. Yeah. Plainfield is nice too. Yeah, <laughs> but you did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've only been to Camden. That seemed like a very nice place. No, <laughs> you stuck your tongue out. I was about to <laughs> put it like this: the police are afraid to go in certain parts of Camden. Camden, they call it hell on earth. I had a shoot in Camden, and it was. It, they, call that's, it, they, they call, they call it, Camden hell on earth. A couple years ago, they had the highest death rate. They still do. There are certain Murder, parts of like Camden that police will not go down. You can actually go down certain streets, and they, cops will not. Now, mind you, they got gun right, and they got artillery. So you would think you got these guns, you got radios so back up. They not like we ain't fucking with that. Right, right, yeah. Get yeah. back up that street. Yeah. Man. So what and made I've you move to Baltimore? Been, huh? What made you move to Baltimore? My fiance. Okay. Where'd y'all meet? We met down, matter of fact, we met down south back in 94. Where down like south? Like a little bit, um, Huntsville. Oh, okay. At a place at um, Oakwood College. Cause gotcha. My father um, was going to Oakwood College. It's like a, a seven-day Adventist school. Okay. A college, rather. And my father was going to school there to be a preacher or a pastor. And, yeah, so we happened to be down there, like I said, and then my mom had passed away. So when I met my fiance, I was uh, my mother had passed away four days before my 19th birthday. Oh man! <clears throat> so I had like my first apartment, and I still had friends that were at Oakwood. And then I went there. I would just go there to hang out. I would drive on the campus to go hang out. And then um, my best friend, matter of fact, Princeton Hall, the director. Okay. We knew each other since we were like 17, and he's like my male best friend. Nice. So <laughs> it was funny because Princeton says to me, Princeton says to me, um, he's like, yeah, but I call him Peanut. So Peanut says to me, he's like, yeah. He's like, there's this guy that saw, because what happened is um, it was a group of guys that I hung out with because I saw them all like brothers. And we called each other the crew. I was the only girl in the crew because I was like, you know, I'm like kind of, I can be tomboyish. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it. Um, and all of the, as far as I was concerned, all these guys were my brothers. I had like my, I just had my first place. So like if they wanted to get away from the dorms and they had like a little lady friend, yeah, bring them by the house. Just make sure y'all not doing nothing crazy. And if you do, I got some sheets in the closet. <laughs> just change my shit. You right. know. No, I'm just saying these are my boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, so uh, Peanut says to me, he's like, um, yeah, he was like uh, this guy. He, you know, he asked me about you. Like, you know, what's up? And I said, well, you know, where is he from? Peanut says, oh, he's from Oakwood. So I said, oh, yeah, no, no, they're corny. I'm good. I don't, you know, not right. knowing he was from Baltimore. But, gotcha. he, you know, so he's like, yeah, no, he's from the, because he goes to the to the college. I was like, yeah, no, I don't want, no, I'm, I'm good. I don't, I don't want to, I'm, I'm good. So weeks, I don't even think nothing else about it. So weeks go by and me and Peanut had went to the mall. So I hear somebody say, P. So P's tall. He's like six foot one, six foot two. So he um, says, oh, hey. And that's what he's like. You know, Nick, this is the guy I was telling you about. So I can't see the guy yet. So I was like, oh, Lord. I'm shutting the car door like, oh, God, right. here we go. This is corny ass motherfucker. Oh, God. So I'm just like, okay. So as I'm turning around, I'm locking the car. <laughs> and he's laughing. And I'm uh, turning around to, you know, from locking the door. P walks up with Akbar. And so he says, yeah, this is the guy I was telling you about. Right. <laughs> I was like, how you doing? Oh, like, she, right, right. <laughs> he wasn't the corny guy you thought he was. No. Okay. Yeah. Like. So you. Yeah. So. <laughs> so you were happy to see this yeah, guy, no, huh? Yeah, pretty happy to see him. So then we um we 
uh, exchange numbers, and then we dated for about a good, I'd say, almost a year, and then we I left to go back up north because I said like my mom had passed in '93, so I didn't want to stay down south. Like I had to leave, so I moved back to um, Patterson and to stay mom for a little bit until I found my place, and then he went to Baltimore, and a couple times I drove from like Pat, you know, Jersey to Baltimore, and then like my car broke down. But then at the time '93, '94. The internet was there, but it wasn't like right when established like it is right. now, right? So um, email and that wasn't, you know. So if we spoke, it was either through phone or like through letter or whatever. And then one day, I just stopped hearing from him, like just stop. And I'm like, I don't. What yeah, happened? You know what I mean? On, like right. what's going on? So I had my. I just got word I was getting my place. So I asked my aunt, like you know, you know, I walked. Has I called? Is it? You know, no, I haven't heard nothing from him. And at one point, I just had to move on. But in the back of my mind, I was like, I got to find this guy. Like, what happened? Like, we never broke up. It was just unfinished business. Right. So fast forward to 2006 in MySpace. So Peanut says to me, he was like, yo, have you thought about maybe trying to find you? Have you heard anything? I was like, no, I'm still nothing. I don't know. I don't know where to begin to find him. I forget his mom's name. I don't, you know. But So he's like, well, try to find him on MySpace. So I said, well, it's worth a shot. And I typed in, like, his name, where he was from the uh age group and blah 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 and a whole bunch of pics popped up of different profiles but this one in particular stood out now th- this time he had dreads and when we were dating he had the like a low like a martin haircut because gotcha. that was the thing back in you know 93 94 yeah and i was like this guy kind of looks like him the smile is the same the body looks the same but the hair it's really throwing me off and i don't want to you know right. i don't want to assume anything so I sent him a letter, a little note. I inboxed him, and I was just like, you know, um, this is this is you know Nikki from Oakwood, and you had a best friend named so and so, and this, that, and the third, and I described, and then I didn't hear anything from like a couple of weeks, and then I got a message from Tom that was like, oh, this account has been compromised, and we have to listen. I was like, I give up, like I'm just done, I can't. And then um, P says to me, and maybe that's like the third week mark, and he was just like, yo, did you hear from? Him? I said, no. I said, let me go check the inbox. And then he was like, oh, my God, I've been looking for you. Call me. This is my number. And I immediately called him. And he was just like, hello? Right. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, it. So then we just, and so we was like, we have to see each other this weekend. This was back in May of 2006. Okay. So we, he came to see me. Everything was just like it was when we left off. Nothing had changed. Right. Everything was, and then we hung out for a little bit. And then we were about to, um, like, just part ways again. So I was just like, so what do we do now? Like, where do we go from now? He was like, well, I'm not trying to lose you again. So, right. so what happened? I mean, no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> that, that time gap. She, what? Did, she did a ring move. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The pause was a ring move. Right. Um, so what, <laughs> what, the gap, what happened with the gap? Oh, he just had gotten, he was from, he was, like, staying with a friend, uh, some, some male friends, whatever, and I guess, they kind of were involved in some stuff gotcha. that wasn't cop friendly. Gotcha. So when they came to pay a, the guys a visit, he happened to be in the house, and they grabbed everybody up, even though he had nothing to do with. You know, that's right. what people need to realize that who you hang out guilty with, by association. with yeah. you guilty by association. Yeah. You could be completely innocent, Accessory. but if somebody does something, it's like, oh nope, you got to come to. Until yeah. they figure out what's going on and who's guilty of what and whatever. So he said he had tried to grab a letter with my information on it, but they were like, yeah, no, everybody, let's go right now. So, Jeez. yeah. So then by the time he did, I had already, like, I was waiting on word by my apartment. So by the time, you know, so it was just shit happened, bad stuff happened, and we kind of, you know, so when I guess he was able to get back in contact, I was already that house was empty and right you know, so thank thank god for the internet <laughs> right right <laughs> thank Even god for it was 13 <laughs> years later right. <laughs> 13, 14 that's years an later. amazing story though yeah so yeah. Yeah. So, so, so the whole time where you kind of like even if you were in other relationships you I were kind of waiting for yeah I, I would always be like i wonder what he's doing and i'll be like if i ever had a you know like if i ever had a chance to meet back like and if everything was good you know i wonder what yeah so it was always in the back of my mind like wow know, like, it was just something about him yes that just it just continued all yeah, that man. while. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's almost like yeah. a story that you would see a movie of, right? like you know, <laughs> like when does that happen? That someone you meet so long ago that you right? They just certain. yeah, because we and like to this day, like still he's like, I can't. If we if we were to 
if something were to happen and we were to break up or things didn't work out, I would just be a bachelorette for us. So like, there's no. Wow. Yes. That's that's, that's the power of love, people, man. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, let's let's talk about some other stuff. Let's. Uh, okay. What is your What is your background? I mean, you know, you 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 know, you are African American. You are. What? My mother was Cherokee and black. Okay. And my father is Greek, Irish, and French. Gotcha. So I'm a mutt. We're not going to say mutt, but you know what I'm saying? You have a, you're, we're all mutts in that case. We all, at least you kind of know what you are, you know? So how does that? I'm multi, I'm multicultural. So being that you're multicultural, how does that play um, in certain circles, you know? Dealing with white people clear. or dealing with black people, how does that, you know, come across? Are you accepted on both ends or? I mean, I don't have a problem um, hanging with either. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't. When I was younger, I struggled with people like, "What are you?" I'm like, "I'm black," and they were like, "No, you're not. You're something else." Not saying you know, but and like, so for the longest, I would kind of, "I'm black." I'm, and like, when I got older, I started to say, "You know what?" By me just instantly saying, "I'm black," I'm kind of discrediting my father. I do have another side to me, even though I am, you know, even though I have a black mother. Right. I do have a white father that's, you know, so now I don't say I'm black. I have black. I do have black in me, but I am, I can't even say I'm biracial because I'm not just white man, black woman. It's right. both of them have mixtures. So now I say, you know, I'm multi, I'm multicultural. And I'm not going to say it offends some people, but, you know, I it's like race is so touchy now. You know what I mean? And, it's, you know, like it's constantly like, oh. It's a battle against dark skins and light skins. And I hate, like, I'm on Twitter, and that's something that eats me up. Team light skin and team dark skin. Right. Shut the fuck up. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, you know, like, Mickey, you're brown. Al, you're lighter. If I was to cut both of y'all. Heavens forbid. <laughs> uh, both of y'all are going to bleed the same color. Right. If we turn these lights out. It, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's not. Right. People need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> eating them chicken nuggets it's that's great. what it is eating them chicken nuggets <laughs> but it's just i don't you know like the whole entire oh you know uh, we i don't like the labels right and people are too quick to be like you know black white i'm a person but you know it's fine but people are so people concentrate on looks too much now so but they oh no you can't what are you because you look like this right like you know so but so but i have come to grips with not Cause I used to feel guilty if I didn't say, I'm black. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Right, so, right, right. But I was like, I'm. I can't keep discrediting other races that I am. Right. You know, this is what I am. So. Well, I'm, but that's fine. I have no problem. If I get along with you, I get along with you. Right. I can walk into a room full of people. I have gotten shade from black people, Asian people, Spanish people, white people, Indian people. I mean, if you're gonna be What's our a cultural up shade. Person, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've caught shade from everybody, so I get along. With, I'll walk into a room and I'll kind of assess, you know, the situation. assess the situation and see who has a personality I'm drawn to. If we, if our personalities click, that's all that matters to me. All right. So all that, you know. Well, let me actually let me throw another question out there. What is like one of your um uh what's the word I'm looking for uh, guilty pleasures? Do you have any guilty pleasures? Like, do you watch a show that you know you shouldn't watch, or do you do something to like, like my guilty? Yeah, you know what? Is it something that you do? <laughs> I no guilty. This is scandal's on it. I actually got pulled in the scandal oh. by my cousin. No, no, I don't think I'm gonna watch the third season. It's I don't know anything about the show. It's just, it's easy to get pulled into, but also to I smoke. I smoke. You, s- we, you, s- you smoke cigarettes? What weed? Oh, she smokes. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> we got to get on that. Uh, to, <laughs> tobacco? No. no. Like, you know how cowboys, you know, they ride no. with their horses and they roll up tobacco? No. Look at this, man. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely not getting that sad right? card now. <laughs> um, <laughs> that sad card's gone. But, like, if I'm just, like, say we were to pull up an episode right now, I could actually sit down and get into it and enjoy it. But if I was to go and smoke a little bit and then sit right. down and watch Scandal, it is the most ridiculous shit I've ever seen in my life. And I sit there and I'd be like, why am I watching this? Because it's, because for some reason, it's like, when you smoke, it, when I smoke, it puts me on like, I can actually, I pay more attention to more detail. And they do too much fast talk. And the whole entire show was fast talk, fast talk, fast talk, fast talk, fast talk. And I'm sitting there like, 
nobody in real life, this is not happening in real life. It just doesn't. So it, it I can't watch Scandal High. I have to watch gotcha. Scandal Sober, like just regular straight, because if I watch it, I'll immediately get up and I'll lose interest because it's bullshit. You can right. kind of see the little, and you just sit there kind of like, get the fuck out of here, you know? Like, right. the, But if I'm ne- if I'm like regular, I can watch it. But so, so don't it, watch it. High. So let's get on this high thing. Like, I mean, how, how long have you, how long have you been how long have you been a, a avid smoker? I mean, how long? I've been smoking since. Oh man, since my that first long. roommate, Crystal, who's my son's godmother. She's a best friend of mine. Me and Crystal had our first place. Ninety six. Since ninety six. Mm-hmm. So you being a mother, how does that affect? What if your kids say, like, hey, I'm smoking weed? Would you feel like, oh, you shouldn't do that? Or would you be like, hey, let's, they're let, hey let me try. Let if me try some with you. If they're of age, they can do it. Okay. Just like my daughter, like, I have tattoos. I don't have a lot, but I have tattoos. And my okay. daughter's like, oh, mom, when I get to be a certain age, I want to get a tattoo. And you know what I said to her? What's that? What are you going to get? Wow. Well, I want a teen wolf. And I, tell, I said, well, Jay, I'm telling you now, <laughs> teen you're 14 wolf. now. So it's, it's some sort of one of the characters, she loves Teen Wolf. So one of the characters has this black band around his arm. Okay. And it's like a black band that turns into something else, but I don't know I don't know what the full tattoo looks like. But I guess in the show, he doesn't have a shirt on. I guess when he turns into the wolf, you can see his whole tat. I don't know. But I told you, I said, I mean, you're 14 now. So you're going to, you're going to change. Your mind is going to change. I, and I told her, I said, just, as long, just do me a favor. If you get a tat, make sure it's something original. Do not get a rose or like a Tweety Bird or something that everybody else has. Like make sure it's something that means something to you. Right. So right now her answer is, well, the Teen Wolf tattoo does mean a lot to me because I said, okay, I'm just saying that when I go with you to get your tattoo, I'm going to say this to you in a chair like, you sure you don't want to get the Teen Wolf? For the rest of your Because life. remember, <laughs> you, you know, what means what, and she, right. she started laughing. I'm not going to say that. I said, okay. I mean, I'm still gonna want it when I'm. I said, okay, we'll see when you turn eighteen. Shoot, I'm older now, and I got <laughs> tattoos. I wish I wouldn't have. I right, got my tattoos know. late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, first so. of all, I think. I mean, I got. I think I would probably keep one. I think it's everybody has them now. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. That's that's the only like. Because I'm such an opposite. Like mm-hmm. I th- I'm an opposite guy. Like with everything. So it's like if everybody does this. I, Cause there was a time I thought about doing like a sleeve type of thing. Like I right. thought about it, right. but it was like I don't know. People made me not want to do it. Like I didn't get my first tattoo till I was twenty four. Like right. that was like because I was born November twenty fourth, oh, and November 8th. on the twenty. Yeah, but November's the best. Yeah, I'm, um, a, I'm, I'm a, a Scorpio. Uh, uh, That's cool. November's you're a Scorpio. Good. Yes. Why are you making that face? I get so sick of people like I'm not going to say what you worst. think. I'm not saying what you think I was going. I just Scorpio's how do you know a, what I'm thinking? I, you're I don't say. know. I thought of mind meld that just no. happened just now. I, no, I, what I, I'm saying is every time someone finds out what uh, sign I am, I just get like a weird look, and I'm like, "What negative shit you got to say now?" Like it's I'm always something say. negative. I'm not going to say anything negative. I I did like I have heard stories of Scorpios being kind of kind of kind of possessive. What? Which isn't always a no, negative thing. No, not always. Thing. No, not always. Have you heard that before? I've heard it. I've yeah, heard yeah, everything yeah, yeah, from, yeah. oh, y'all are revengeful. Oh, you're possessive. Oh, you're jealous. Yeah. Oh, you're freaky. I mean, everybody's oh, their own individual right, person. Right, right. But, you know, I've heard yeah. that, you know, the Scorpio yeah. thing. I'm just getting into the sign thing, but it okay. does. You can tell a lot about a person. And people. You, do you believe you, it? You can't, you, I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's verbatim like that's exactly how you're going to be, but you can tell. Like, for example, Gemini's have the two faces mm-hmm. and i have i i know male gemini's and i know female gemini's and them motherfuckers will switch up on you yeah, like that yeah, two face and when you say two face i don't mean like two face like they'll stab you in the back but they have yeah. two sides to them and this shit switches up too quick i think that's very true but my dad is a gemini <laughs> well and, have you have you experienced that but with your he's, father? he can be real aggressive and then real be real sensitive at the same time the two faces yeah he but my dad's crazy because he'll get mad at you and it, it is it's it that's done yeah. it's over with or he'll just, you know, you'll say something, you say the wrong thing, and he'll get all sensitive. You hear like a week later, yo, your dad didn't like that you said such and such. You know, I'm like, why are you so sensitive? <laughs> you couldn't tell what sign I am. Take a wild guess. Leo. Wrong. <laughs> Aquarius. Well, you only got what twelve of them to choose from. Right. <laughs> What's your sign? I'm a Cancer. My mother was a Cancer. Cancer. Really? Yeah. Right. And me and her was yeah. like this. Yeah. Cancer, June twenty yeah, ninth. Cancer is awesome. Cancer is a water sign, so Cancer and Scorpios. Cancer and Scorpios and Pisces are water signs. Now, Pisces. Um, uh, uh, drop the knowledge now. We want to hear this. Huh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Drop the knowledge. Drop the knowledge. <laughs> Pisces are 
Pisces are cool. Okay. I like female Pisces better than male Pisces. Male Pisces are too sensitive. And too much, when you're too sensitive, it drives me crazy. Because some people's sensitivity is almost a sign of weakness. I don't like yeah, weakness being like it, it. It bothers me. Yeah. Like, stop crying. You have balls. Cut it out. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Like, man yeah. up. Like, suck it up. Yeah. I have bigger balls than you. Do. I don't even have any balls. Do, like, do, so. Do, yeah. Male Pisces are a little, eh, eh, I don't, mm. you know, I don't, yeah, so, but they're cool, though, as, as a whole. I do get, you know, because Pisces are water signs, so I get along with them, but Aries, no. Too much of a power struggle. Man. Yeah. Do, do you, do you, what's one thing in a relationship that you would say, like, uh, are you a fan of cleanliness? No. Cleanliness? Cl oh, clingy. Clingy, No. no. Not a fan of clingy. So if, if a person wanted to be with you or if your fiance wanted to be with you all the time, everywhere you went, you know, attached to the hip, no. It no, it wouldn't work. Right. Even with me being a, a quote-unquote director, I mean, I need – I needed my wife is good for me because I need somebody to let me do my thing. Right. Let she me understands. go out. Right. I don't got to worry about checking in every 24-7. Like, right. oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. you right. know, she's not texting me. Ah, what are you doing? What are you doing? Right. So – you need somebody's gonna let you do your thing, right? You know, in this industry, yeah. And you won't have to worry about, oh man, she's uh, she's cooking pot roast tonight. I gotta get home, but we gotta eat at such and such time. So, right. Not to say that's a bad thing, but it just wouldn't, for, yeah, and it wouldn't it's work. Not a bad yeah. thing. But I mean, I, it's, I, this is a tough industry for for just for relationships. You know, you well, not really, as long as you you know let your, your your um yeah, as long as you let your mate know what's going on. And I also too, I, I've I've noticed that like. And they may even say no, but if every so often you even extend out to your mate, like, hey, I'm about to go on, you know, do you want to come with, you know, that lets them know, like, there's nothing. Because some people will use that as ways to be able to You're get the right. freak on right. and just fuck whoever. But no, it's like if you constantly, no, I'm serious. Some people will use that as, you Keeping know, it all the way real. Yeah. So it's like as long as you let your, you know, your mate, your man or your woman know, like, you know, and they know what you're doing. Like, if you're constantly saying, oh, I got to go on set, oh, I got to do this, and then you have no work to show behind it. It's gonna be kind of just like, oh, you're going on set, right? You lying son of a bitch. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> <laughs> so as long as you have, you know, well, I'm going here for a couple hours if I'm shooting with so and so, and then you have a a project, and they've met people that you know, like Ock has met. Ock knows P. Like I said, he introduced us. He knows Rich. We, you know, um, he hasn't met. I don't I think yet. Yeah, so I make sure that he knows this is yeah. who I worked with. It's no sort of now if it's shade and then. Um, it's constant, like, because you could tell when something's going on with somebody oh, and somebody yeah. else. Yeah. And if exactly. it's just shade, it's kind of like, you know, oh, we got to hurry up and go over here because someone says, like, what is the, what are you yeah, hiding? Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So hey. as long as everything is open and out front, I don't see what the problem is, unless they're just totally just not understanding and then that's not going to last anyway because my daughter's father was like that. Mm. He, was he tried real. to give me a verbatim, and that's the worst thing you could do. So and I even said to him, I was just like, one. I was like, please don't do this. And he just was like, it's either me, because if you go on this, because he kept saying, like, if I wanted to take pictures, he would get upset. If I wanted to try to do, because he also tried to say that acting was just a hobby. Mm, and I'm saying to myself, like, mm, no, it's not just a hobby. It's it's something this that I want to do. It's what yeah, I want to do. Your passion. So he would kind of laugh at it and make, you know, see, a joke out of it. And then so one day he made a, like, he made the ultimatum. He just was like, if you go on this set, I swear to God, that's it. And I said, please do not do this because you're not going to like the choice I'm going to make. Mm. Oh, so you're saying, so what are you saying? I'm saying, but bad now. It's been fun, but I'm not choosing my career. I'm not choosing us over my career because if shit, if we happen to fall apart, yeah, I gave regrets. up on my career for what? Yeah. yeah. So. Do you, do you think cleanliness can ever work in a relationship? Like, like I know if the person likes it. Yeah. Does, do you think clinginess? If the, if the, some people like that, some people like that clinginess because I don't I don't know why that annoys me. Like, don't because I'm not clingy. Mm -hmm. I have my moments where I want to be affectionate, but I need, everybody needs space. Everybody needs. Yeah. Yeah. So a clingy person needs a clingy person. It's a guy at my job that. Yeah. They either need early. a clingy person or they need someone that feeds off of clinginess. Because some people actually that's an ego booster for some people. Like oh, oh like so -so she needs, needs me. Or yeah. He needs me. Yeah. They want and and me. then it's crazy because then they'll treat the clingy person like shit. They will. I've seen it. I've seen it. But they get their rocks off, 
And I've seen some girls are like clingy dudes because it just, oh, you know, like it just, it's an ego booster. Mm. So, so it, you think it's also kind of an underlying thing that there's some ego issues or yeah. there's some underlying maybe confidence issues for yeah, why they Yeah, because they, right. Yeah, but I can't stand clinginess. Cause I'm not clingy. It's like, like we'll be together, but like at one point, like I need to breathe. Like, go ahead. Yeah, do your thing. Yeah, go to, to please. Yeah. <laughs> go to the game with the boys. Go to the club. Do something. <laughs> go shoot some pool. I'm, I'm with that. I'm yeah. with that. Yeah. I always tell my wife, I say, yo, you you going, no problem. Yeah. Just call me, let me know you're going to be home. Right. That's, that's all I need Yeah, to know. just show respect. Don't yeah. come home. Don't let the sun beat you home. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, because that's called that's you're you're showing respect. Now, if we don't live together, I can't tell you what time to come to your own place. Like, if I have my own place, you have your own place. I'm not gonna be calling like, "Are you in the house yet?" Right. And you in your house yet? I'm not paying no bills there. I can't right. tell you what to do. Don't let me do yeah, it though. Yeah, someone yeah, try. Do it. And how? Are you in your house? I'm yeah. outside right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see your car. I don't, I'm outside your home right now. Right. I don't see your car. I don't see your car. I, yeah. uh, I'm on the beltway right now. I'm waiting until I see you right. enter your door. <laughs> right. You better not have no bitch with you. Like, what? Yeah, you know that's a dirty stack. That's how it is, man. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Well, I mean, do do you men like the clingy chicks? Or I don't. Do I don't. Uh, what about you, Mickey? I don't. I, I don't, but in my, in my time, I think they like me, though. I think they've liked me, but I don't. I don't I don't it's it's weird because times that I have felt that mm -hmm. it's it is kind of like it's always good to know where that person is, you know, right. as far as wh how they feel about you. I don't know. I guess clingy is kind of like I guess it's ways to look a perspective is everything because maybe what you view as clingy could be. They really like you, or they really care about you, and they really want to hang with you. And no, you know, I think he's clingy. You know, I, <laughs> keep it thug. No, uh, keep it thug. I was, you know, I was looking for another angle of where clingy could be viewed as. You know, maybe. See, for me, I mean, that that, would, that turns me off because I always want a woman that's doing something. You know right. what I'm saying? That you know, she got something going on, and I think clinginess is a product of your your whole relationship is that person. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, like, you know, I need a woman that's got her own thing going on other than yeah. stuck in our relationship. So, right. um, but for some people, that works. For clink for some people, people want somebody that's clingy. Right. Um, I guess define, define clingy, Al. Like, I think people have different definitions of what clingy is. Like, some people, if a person wants to be up under you, they may not f define that exactly as clingy. Mm -hmm. And. <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> she she was searching for no. a while. She she just she just jumped up on the seat. She did a backflip off the seat. <laughs> a martial arts roundhouse kick. But you know, yeah. So so define that with your definition. My definition of clingy would be somebody that um tries to is around you that needs you. Right. Um, to pretty much survive, and if you don't give it to them, they'll whine about it. Or that's clingy for me. Um, instead of doing it for themselves, or just understanding the moment that hey, this might not be the moment for you to be clingy or right. that, too needy, too needy. Right. What do, what do you? Needy. What about you, Mickey? Do you have a def different definition? So me and me and the dude at my job, he was kind of like because he only gets <laughs> all right. He he does. He probably doesn't listen to the show. Oh he probably doesn't listen. To it. He only gets. He only goes out like once, maybe every two or three months. Maybe once. Or they have a guys. Apparently, it's like a guys' night out, and okay. they have to. He has to give an itinerary of what he's gonna do with him and his guys. Um, Wait. He so to, so he has to break down exactly. He has to say where he's going, where it's at. A bunch of stuff uh and uh and there's a certain time for the end of his event and uh you know there are texts that are happening as he's conducting this event and uh his uh his uh thing about what it is he was saying well it's because you know she wants to make sure i'm okay she is concerned about me, you know, you know, we have a kid together, you know, she just wants to make sure everything's okay. 
And, you know, we at the job, it's kind of hard when somebody's explaining that to you because that's when I was talking about perspective because I'm like, I w- wouldn't like that, but he doesn't look at that as being clingy. So he clingy, doesn't, it doesn't bother you him. You know what I mean? But that's what kind of, I wanted to understand what clingy, because I wouldn't look at that as that's kind of clingy. But she's kind of looking at it you as don't more think that's of a clingy? concern. I mean, I don't, I, I don't, especially here in Baltimore, you need to know where people at, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. All right, so, I, all right, so oh, if oh. your wife says you're about to go out with Mickey, and yeah. your wife says, Al, she gonna you're say leaving. You... No, hypothetically. Go ahead. Go ahead. Al, you're leaving here at 8.05 and 28 seconds. Right. So you're supposed to go to Ruth Chris Steakhouse, the bowling alley, shoot 20 minutes of pool, get some gas, and come back. So calculating by the distance, uh, traffic time. You should be back in the house no later than twelve oh seven and forty eight <laughs> seconds. Mm. That's, that's and a little then extreme. That's what he just said. But right. was he and like, then so um, after you know, so as you're going, she's like, and as you leave each location, you're going to text me and you're going to say, "Hey, babe, I just left here and I'm now here." And that. if right, that's and if that. you don't, it's gonna be a problem. Like I would be like, "Mama." Right. Well, see, <laughs> see, I didn't, I didn't look at it like that, but I looked at it at, at the sense that you know you were saying that. She gave him. She gave him a run. I don't mind the rundown, like saying, "Hey, I'm going out. We're probably gonna end up going here, going here, going here." Just let people know, check in. But when it gets to you, got to check in, like, "Oh, I'm here now. Now I'm here now." now I'm but here. that's what he's saying because see, like, with, with, when Ock goes out, all he's all he has to say to me is, "Babe, I'm about to go out with the boys." Okay, he's a grown man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, now if he leaves, no matter when he leaves, I know, like I said, he's barking. I know when clubs close. Right. So if now it's going on 2.45, 3 o'clock, and I haven't heard from you, or I'm going to call you to be like, was there an accident? Did you get shot? Did somebody stab you? Did you know where? Because anything, no, because anything, anything can happen. Anything can happen. You know what I'm saying? Right. But other than that, I'm not, if you say I'm going out with the boys, right. go be with the boys. Especially when I you live some, with somebody. I see all week. There you go. When you live with I somebody. I will see you, you when you come back. Now, I appreciate now if he just walked out the house and was like, Deuces. peace out, or yeah. didn't even say shit, then I got a problem like, excuse you. Right. You know, but as long Hey, babe, I'm about to go. Okay. And then, you know. Yeah. But him telling you, yeah, yeah, we just left the bar. We're about to go to. He doesn't to... need to do all that. Yeah. I don't need to do it. Now, I think he looks at that as being, you know, I'm I'm letting her know for, for well, purposes. Yeah, no, no, but what if, I'm he saying, if he does do it, okay, that's fine. But yeah. I'm not going to say, um, um, what you know, I'm going out with the boys. So where are you going? What's the name of the club? What's the location? Um, make sure that after every drink. You call me. <laughs> you tell me how many shots so you let had. Let me know your what, alcohol right. intake. And then, as soon as um, you know, you guys go to the bathroom, text me. <laughs> um, and then when you're walking out the door, text me. Then when you get in the car, text me. And then when you're like five minutes <laughs> now, text me. No, <laughs> it's that's not, not necessary. The way he explained it is, if he doesn't say that, he's going to get a text. So what are you doing? What's going on? You know, like like. But my thing is, conversation as, as a, that's don't happening have... to make sure that she knows she's informed. Through the duration of this. But why is that necessary? Like, if she's in the house, she ain't got Netflix. You know There's nothing is. she could do. You, you know what it is? I, 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 I think maybe for her, and I'm not defending her, but maybe it's to calm her nerves down. But for what? She might be concerned, sh- worried concerned. out of her mind. <laughs> if that's the case, she should have just gone with him, if that's the case. Well, you I mean, know? It's the boys' night out, though. It's the boys' night out. You can't bring your wife. But if you're not, I mean, you should know your your man or your woman's friends who they frequently that's hang out with. That's very true. You know what I'm now, if there's true. always some sort of switch up and something. To, okay, I mean, is your boy, has your boy been known to cheat on her before? Or has she been a type that have been cheated on a lot? Because that sounds that like can, that's what that, that can is. be a problem. This could be possible. That's but what that sounds like. That I, don't, I don't know him to that degree. We were just, I don't know how we got on. It was like a slow part of the work day, and then okay. we got on that type of thing. And I, at first, I was, the judgment was because I'm, you know, I'm the only child. Like, I'm all into my own space and stuff right. like that. So, stuff like that is kind of like, uh, yeah, that's, that's you know, I'm I like, uh, I'm not used to sharing stuff just in general. So then, it's kind of like, but then I, I said, I still back. I was like, you know what? Is is that really? If she's concerned and it comes from a place of love, to, it's coming from a place of love. She loves her her man, and she just wants to make sure he's okay, twenty four seven, seven days a week, at all times. It's also a form of control. It is, but is it is it bad control? 
You can't really, you can't really say it was bad control because is, if they, bo- well, if they both agree to it, they both agree to it. You really can't say. Well, it's I'm saying, bad. no, I'm saying some people like it. Yeah, so some people if he like likes it. it. I mean, yeah. but I'm saying me personally, I yeah, that yeah, would. What's your, it, what's your opinion on control? Yeah. It's some bullshit. <laughs> I'm grown. You grown. There's no such thing as control. Yeah, that's how I feel. I feel the same way. Yeah, I, I mean, not way. even like I like you can't. But my it's like no, it's like it's. It drives me. It drives like don't try to control me because I'm not gonna try to control you. Yeah, I mean, it's, there has it's, to be a so, level of respect, but you know, yeah. it's uh. Yeah, yeah it's, I like, like I said, it's one thing to let me, you know, like if you're gonna say like you can't just walk out, you know, especially if you're living with somebody. Right. It's just that's that's you're being disrespectful. Yeah. Right. But because you could just be going out to do anything, just let me know. Okay, where you're going? You know yeah. what I'm saying? But because I do the same thing, but all that checking it like oh no. No. Yeah. yeah. No. I mean, I'm not sure you've heard of a dude being like, yo, I mean, I've known friends no, definitely. No, I know a lot yo, of yo, 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 son, wait, wait, I got to check in. Like, check in. Yeah. I mean, but if yeah, the man really doesn't know. have. I've been, in that, I've been in that situation before. <laughs> but wait, I'm, I'm going to say, even, I mean, I think it's it's common courtesy. Like, if you're out for like six, seven hours, to just well, yeah. send a text and That's say, different. hey, yeah, but I'm I mean, cool. but I'm every out. time you change location, oh, every no, 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 20 no. minutes, every. No. Like, you ain't got nothing else to do? No. Like, but you know what? The, a fair assessment could be that if she's if she's home with the kids, somebody's got to babysit the kids. If she's home with the kid, then maybe you know she doesn't have maybe she doesn't have any friends. Maybe you know idle mind, and you know all she has to think about is I have a you know, three year old. He's gonna be three in September, and your child is giving you way enough stuff to do for you to be like up. Oh, Hold on, hold on. Oh, can we talk about that? Cause I got, a, I got. I, I'm so blessed to have a, a niece born two days ago. Oh, yeah. Congrats. My first, my yeah. She's beautiful. Yay. But oh. it was. I'm sad to say this. This is my sister's first child. Oh. But um, it was so anticlimactic for me. What do you mean? Cause like when you think of a baby, you don't think about an infant. Yeah. You think about a baby. You make a face. They make a face back. You know. You play peekaboo. But when it's a Infant, it's just there. Cause they have to grow into it. <laughs> I know that, <laughs> but it's just like I I love kids. I love right, kids. Right, right, right. But it's like I went to go see my sister at the hospital yesterday. And I was like, they were like, do you want to hold a baby? I was like, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they they are a little. They are. I mean, I know some people that are freaked out by like little tiny tiny infants because they squirm and, and they stretch and all these weird noises. And, right. You know, so I mean, just get a baby a little bit of time to to, I, to grow into itself. No, you know? I know we're gonna be like road dogs, yeah. me and my little niece. But like, yeah, right now Ava. she don't know. Yeah, like she but she's just such can't a even focus baby. Her eyes. Yeah, she's, yeah. She's, she's, she just came out the womb. She just came out, and it's just like yeah, so. I was like, oh, I thought I'd be like super happy when I actually saw her, and she was just like swaddled up. I was like, she probably was asleep. <sighs> eyes was probably shut. That's all you saw was like uh, material in her face. Pretty know, much. Yeah. So. Pretty much. But it was. Yeah. But it, give it a couple of weeks. I'm gonna tell you, man, that whole birth thing is crazy like i yes. didn't realize how <laughs> much blood was in the room like blood literally in the room like that yeah it's a lot of blood i was shocked you don't have children mickey no. none of us yeah, have kids it's, it's it's blood i'm just saying like <laughs> like i went to go wash my hands and it was like blood on the daggone it was blood it was blood everywhere yeah. it's like a mur- it's like blood on the yeah. ceiling and all oh it was yes no wait a minute hey, what is this what is this i lied to you now with gbm squirting blood no, it's, it's a lot. Women lose a lot of blood. You have to, re- like. And it makes you think, like, what do they do before they have, like, an epidural? Like, my sister said, I said, because my sister has no threshold for pain. I said, what was it? She's like, it was about a four. I scale from one to ten. She's like, the last contraction was about a seven. And then they gave me the epidural. She's yeah, like, she was texting me during, like, yeah, while she was pushing. Yeah, because, like, if you are, the way the body is made is, like, if you're in a lot of pain and you're pushing, and it's too much pain, your body won't open up because you have to open up a certain amount of centimeters for the baby to come out. Right. So you go from zero centimeters to 10 so the baby can come out. That's how the contractions come and all yeah. that stuff. So. so you have to open up down there. Your your crotch, your vag area oh. has to actually open up. <laughs> she got no stitches or anything like that. Bless her heart, yeah. But I, yeah. I'm, see, this is what, and, I, and she went home today, and I said, this is when the rubber hits the road because yeah. you don't have any nurses around now. You know. Well, I mean, does she have a C-section or does she have natural? She had natural. Okay, so she's probably all, she she's, has to wait a good six weeks. Just don't fiddle around down there. Sure. Yeah. Because it's going to stretch, but you know, because your uterus has to shrink. Everything has to shrink Come back. Come back, right. Yeah. And that, and so. But and it, every, it goes right back to the way it looked before the bit. It goes, everything goes, so don't freak out. It goes right back to. I, I just couldn't everything, imagine. Because it's, it's almost like it stretches and then just everything goes right back to exactly the way it looked before. Well, I'm, so how many kids do you have? I have two. I have a, 14-year-old. She just turned 14. And you have and a boy. 
three. my son will be three in September. So how does that? Um, so how does that fourteen year old? She's a female. Um, she's good and she is very respectful because I make sure that she's respectful. See, that's and I and I already told her like she um and she's if her, her she's um if you didn't know her age, you would think she was a lot older, but she's not. So she's I, mature. She's very, oh, does she look? Yeah. Okay. She's very developed and um. But me and her, we talk openly. I don't talk to her like a kid. I tell her, yeah. And also, too, I told her that at a certain age, because she's too big to be trying to get a belt and things. So, oh, um, trying to I don't know exactly when we're talking yet, about. but we're going to Fist Dick's. Bikes. No, we're going to Dick's Sporting Goods. All right. And I'm going to pick out my gloves. And nice. And let her pick out her, her color gloves. All right. And then I'm going to hang the gloves on a hook in the kitchen. And I'm going to tell her, I'm going to let her know, like, if you ever feel... Like, you know, you like you want to go and you need to let it out. The mouth right. and you need to get disrespectful. We're going to lace up and we're going to go in the backyard and I'm going to fuck you up. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking we about. We didn't even go to the backyard because I want to see me beat the shit out of you. So we're going to do it in the living room. Right. But either way, yeah. So when Cause I you know you it's Because you know it's coming. Up, you know it's coming. Yeah. Because so. I can only imagine. Like, I honestly think that a, a female will take off a male's life probably about seven, eight years from the stress. Because right. my theory is this. You can't be too nice to a female, a daughter, right. because she's going to think every guy's nice. But if you're not nice to a girl... Well, not even talk to her. It's not about you being mean to her. Like, talk. Like, oh, I talk to Jay. Like, but see, you're a female, but... It doesn't matter. Even with even with men. Even even with, like, her father. Like, talk to That's It's all about communication. Like, with my... Like, with Nicholas, when he gets to be a certain... I'm not going to stop talking to him because, oh, I'm a woman and he's a man. I right. can't just talk to your father. No, I'm going to talk to Nick. You like, we're going to... Yeah, I'm gonna talk. Uh, yeah, we're gonna talk. Now, when it comes to shit that only men can answer, right? Go to dad all day long. But I, I wish there was a book that you could be like, this is this is the proper way, because it, it to be a parent to because yeah. there is cause no proper way. There is no proper way. So you can't write a book That's like that. Scary because thing. the same way, no, it's not. Because the same way, what works for you or your parenting style may not work for the next person. Like right. some people, and this is bananas to me. There, I, I there was a study of. Where these people took, um, say, five babies. They took ten babies, and okay. they split them down the middle. And five babies, every time the baby would cry, like, they would interact with the baby. Right. But the other babies, if the baby cried, they would not touch them. They wouldn't do nothing. And if the baby, as a person, got older, the person was very antisocial and just, like, would freak out if he even touched it. Right. So some people believe in, like, letting the baby cry itself to sleep and letting the baby self They're crying self for something. And blah, blah, blah. Right. No, I don't believe in that. I believe right. in like if something is wrong, they're you crying know, you for talk a reason. To the baby, you touch like touch is very important. I'm very touchy feely, very affectionate. Right. My mother was like that. Like she and to me, it's like that shows love. Like you don't have to constantly say I love you, I love you. You can right. get somebody a hug. You can you know touch them. Like if you guys, you guys could be sit, like I touch my children all the time. Like I'm constantly you know touchy feely. I rub them on the arms. I squeeze them. If Nick is watching TV with me, he may be sitting on me and I'm I'm squeezing his legs and rubbing his you know his kneecaps and. I'll bite him a little bit on his shoulders, and he he laughs, and now mommy, you know, same thing with my daughter. She's, right. she's 14, and as big as she is, every so often she'll come up and she'll cuddle up against me up on the couch. It's a way of showing love. It's a way of having good, you know. No, she's about, I'm 5'5", five, five, Jay is about 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, Nick asks how tall is the yeah. no, so, like When you keep saying she's big, I'm like, Yeah, she's you know. 14. Like, four more years, she'll be a grown woman. Oh, okay. That's yeah, so... She's I mean, not a little kid anymore. She oh, is. Okay. She's gonna so be 15 this year coming up. So you know, I still want her to know. You know, I love her. I'm not gonna. I have to be a little bit more harder with her because she's mm. getting older, and I know her hormones gonna kick in in a minute. And yeah. The minute boys gonna come into play, and I just don't want to have any sort of like I don't see my daughter doing being a runaway. Yeah. I talk yeah. to her too much, and yeah, I let her know. Good. You know, so and like um like when I say I talk to her, I don't talk to her. Like for example, she, there was this little um this little white boy from school that liked her mm -hmm. and she um and like i she shows me her text messages i know her facebook password i'm wow. in her you know because i want her to know if anybody messes with her if anybody tries to harass her i'm gonna get in their ass and let them know like all the cyber bullying that's not gonna happen yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah this kid has somebody that gives a fuck yeah exactly. me and you know her stepfather and her father like yeah. everybody's very active in her life that's great so that's this little really great. kid that liked her whatever he had older brothers and so, like, they have Uvu where they can see each other on the, you know, yeah, on yeah, the telephone yeah, yeah, and all yeah. this mess. So, one time she asked me, she's like, Mom, am I ugly? I said, no, why? And she's like, because Jake, you know, his brothers 
people like, oh, she's not that cute because she, you know, they're white boys and she, and so, yeah. oh, they, you know, this little, her best friend, Amy, who's a Spanish girl. And they were like, oh, you should have got with Amy. But they're constantly telling him, oh, tell her next time y'all get on Uru, tell her, show your titties. And I said, you better not. And she was like, I wouldn't do that, mom. And I said, yes, yeah. because they have screenshots. I said, this yeah. is how cyberbullying starts. If yeah. anybody ever asks you for a picture, you send them a picture of you smiling. You know, yeah. do not, no titties, no ass shots, no panty shot, nothing. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I know. I, like, I, we watched the movie together called Cyber Bully. Yeah, I she seen know, that That shit was crazy. Yeah, with the, the Lee, one, Leslie, with uh, Emily Joe Osment. Is it the one with the guy? On Netflix. Um, is it the one with the guy uh, that played in, um, and he's like, he has an accent or something, mm -mm. the father. I don't remember. Pull, uh, pull it up on here and see, is it the, yeah. but it had, it had, um. Emily, matter of fact, the little boy who played in, he's not little anymore, but Joe, um, Haley Joe Osment, the one who played in um, Sixth Sense. Oh, His him? sister, his little sister, Emily Osment. I saw something else that was. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's the movie. Really good movie. Let me, let me see if it's the guy. Go down just a little bit. Let me just see if the guy that I was thinking. Oh, no. I saw, I saw something else that uh, was based on that same premise. Okay. Where, but yeah. uh, we sat down, we watched that, and I told her this is how this type of shit happens. Like, yeah. don't ever give anybody a reason to have anything. I said, and, was, and it, it all started from her best friend. Her mm -hmm. best friend set her up for failure, and she almost killed herself and all Damn. this crazy mess. Yeah. So, um, That's in the movie. In the movie. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, 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 oh, no. Yeah, yeah. I would never let it get that far. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, anyway, yeah. so she's, um, so what happened is, um, she started telling me, she was like kind of upset one day. I was like, what's wrong? She was like, well, you know, um, I'll just call him Jay. I don't want to say his full name. So she's like, Jay says to me, oh, I'm going to, um, I'm losing my virginity in two weeks with or without you. I said, and what did you tell him? And she was just like, I told him so. I said, yeah, you keep telling him so. So then she showed me, she was on the, her, on her phone and she just was looking at it, shaking it. So I took the phone from her and I read all the, I read the whole transaction. So I said, okay. I said, do you mind if I reply? She said, no, I don't care. So, okay. So I wrote to him and I was like, you know, Jay, this is, this is Jalen's mother. I said, I'm just letting you know that I said, I have seen every text between you guys for the past two months. I said, and I see how you're trying. You, you tell her your brother's saying, show you this, that. Like, I'm pretty much breaking everything down to him. I said, if this keeps going on, you keep harassing my daughter. I said, I will be contacting the school to have a meeting with your parents, you and my daughter sitting right there. I said, because my daughter is not the one to play with. I said, you will respect my daughter. I said, and you will not keep harassing her to be sexual with you. I said, do we have an understanding? 20 minutes of silence. Yes, ma'am. You motherfucking right. Don't play with my children. Mm. Yeah, we're not going to play and with it, And that's needed. That's <laughs> so, needed, man. Yeah. That's so I want him to know, like, she's days. not, yeah. And he has two older brothers. And I know, like, pressure from the, you know, he probably, he probably, he's a kid. He's the same age as Jay. He don't know no better. Yeah. But I want him to know, like, don't let your brothers get you in some trouble. Because I'm quite sure if I was to go to his parents with these messages, yeah. they would not be happy with yeah. him. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So and so you know, crazy yeah. these days. It's yeah. like you 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 know. It's like back in the day when I was growing up. It was like the worst thing. That, even if you did have an issue, it was like it stayed at school. So right. for it to like nowadays, it's like if somebody get got beat up in high school, mm -hmm. you wouldn't. I mean, you wouldn't even know where to start to find that. But these days, I mean, if somebody gets beat up. It's being filmed. It's gonna yeah. be around forever. Yeah. You can never really get away. That's why from that it's just right. it's like really a crazy you gotta be really hands-on like the way like sometimes you know i can speak from my growing up it's not always hands-on it's kind of like ah, oh, he'll figure it out as he grows up right, or whatever right. but these days it's like you really have to be have your thumb on the pulse of what's really going on yeah. because all it takes is like one bad incident yeah. and it's like and it's filmed yeah. you cannot really con you can't control that stuff because it's it's done gone everywhere yeah. so i it, hearing what you're talking about it yeah. made me think like like how would i even go about like if i have a daughter like how would i do, do it's what? just so crazy like you, you want to protect your daughter yeah. with yeah. all your you protect, know but you yeah. know you can't be around 24 7 but i'm thinking like i would have to adopt your theory i mean your uh your theorem of man, I got to be involved. You have to in all also, too, that about it. stuff. Yeah, like when I was fourteen, like my daughter has a cell phone. My daughter has a, a fucking iPhone. Her father got her, and she's no, she's totally responsible. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's like my fourteen. Yeah, it's nothing like this for like yeah. this fourteen is. And think about like the tech, how technology is now. It's going to be even more advanced. 
Yeah. When Nick's 14 and when you guys have kids, you know what I mean? So you, you get, like now it's before, like you said, it's like, oh, he'll learn. No, you got to talk. You have to because there's so many images and it's like society and media and music is over sexualizing our youth. For example, Miley Cyrus. Right. You yeah. saw that. You saw mm-hmm. we, uh, we did it. We did it. Re- oh, you did, did you really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with Lauren, cool. tra- Lauren Charles. No, uh, no. Uh, what was her name? Lauren. Uh, Lauren. It was Lauren something. Uh, Chanel Loren. Sure. Okay, Chanel Loren. Okay, and you. Um, I don't think you guys point this out, but if you think about when Miley came out, what did her hair look like? Blonde. What was the style of her hair? Long hair. Are you talking about? Oh, at the VMAs. Yes. It was short, and she what had the little she, the little horns little on for you. Right. Okay. okay. What was before she stripped and had on the the little two piece thing? Yeah. What was the one piece little? She had a teddy bear shit. thing going on. Okay, she had a teddy bear on it. Right. And then on the stage, there were teddy bears right. dancing around. Who plays with teddy bears? Kids. Wow. That's Over-sexualizing the youth. Yeah. So you're humping teddy bears. You're and, and doing right, all right, this. Right, right, right. Got the finger right before. Like, little kids are going to look at this and right. say, like, on, do you guys have Vine? Yeah. yeah I yeah, saw yeah. two Vines that just, like, I'm like, this is the world we live in. There was a one Vine, this little Spanish kid, and he's dancing, and he's singing something. And whoever's holding the fu- camera says to him, you can't dance. He stops. He says, fuck you. Yeah. And he posted it. That's then there's that's another that's little that's Asian girl. She looks like she might be Asian or Asian and Spanish mix. And so she's like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Right. You're filming this yeah. laughing yeah. and you're posting it. Right. Yeah. That's not cute. It's a fucking baby. It's a yeah. kid. Yeah. These kids don't know what fuck you means and shut the fuck up. They, don't, yeah. they just hear and then the you, older person, yeah, like little boy, where he'd be like, "Delete that shit, delete all that shit." He ain't no older than seven, eight years yeah. old. And then you got these young girls looking at Bad Girls Club, thinking that they're gonna get right. they're gonna twerking, get twerking, right? Yeah, it's a lot of pressures, and I, and I, and you, me hearing you talk to that story is like it's like scary, what do you almost mean? about your daughter, because like you have a lot that you have to go against, like you almost gotta be like the police, yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, but you can't be like two, because also to me being younger, and I remember my father, me and my father didn't have the best relationship. Like I always, because he was trying to be too controlling. And he would do this thing where, um, say like he said, you can't do this. And I'd be like, well, dad, why? As a kid, you may, you're not asking that to be disrespectful, but you'd like, because I said so. Right, that's not good enough these that's days. That's not, even back then. Yeah. So I would be like, oh, really? Okay, well, I don't want to, I want to do what I want to do. If I talk to my mother, she's like, you know, don't do that. And I'd be like, well, my, and then she would, Give me not a full blown explanation because as an adult, you don't have to explain shit to your kids. I get it. But she would say, I don't want you to do this because you're going to get her. She would give me a slight explanation to kind of, and that was the buffer. And I would say, "Hmm, okay, I I could see that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're just like, you're just like, go to your room. You can't do nothing. Well, what? Shut up because I said so. You're going to be like, okay. And then I'm going to sneak off and do what I want to do. You know what I mean? So you can't be like the police. You have to talk to them. You got to let them know, like, I'm mom or I'm dad. You know, we're not friends, but you can talk to me. Like, I tell my sister, I, my sister, I tell my daughter all the time, you can talk to me. You can come to me. If somebody says anything to you, if you are at school and you have, you feel, you know, or anywhere, over your friend's house and an older person of their family comes and you feel compromised, tell me. Do not hold. I can't help you if you don't tell me what's going on. Do you think your parent would be different for your son? Is it is it a difference between a parenting with a son and a daughter? Well, he's he's about to turn three, so I would think he and he's so rambunctious. Oh my god, he um, <laughs> I would think at one point. It may be because with boys, it's so different. Right. So I may have to come at, I'll figure it out. I may have to come at him a little differently. Right. But I'm still going to talk to him. Right. You know, I'm still going to let him know because the sad part now is it's not just the opposite sex targeting your children. That's true, too. It's the same sex targeting your children. So the same way before we're like back in the day where the big bad, you know, um, the big bad person that was lurking in the shadows for little girls were men. Yeah, now it's not. Now it's. Both. Yeah. Well, see, this is the scary thing. With little thing boys, too. now it's not. Oh, the old the woman may. Now you got. Yeah. Men, you know, preying yeah. on his little. So it's you know, so it's all about just period. Like I know when he gets older, he starts to go to. I'm got to good touch and bad touch. Yeah. If something makes you feel, uh, it's right. bad. If anything makes your, you know, makes you feel strange or icky on inside, it's bad. No matter what, it, it's right. just bad. Whether it's a man or a woman, right? And you tell us, you let us know, you know. So, so I couldn't even imagine my kids like playing outside. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. In this day and era, 
day, well, day and age. Uh, yeah. It's like it's so like I don't. Is it that things have gotten bad, or is it that we're just more exposed to what's going on in the world now that we? No, have it's stuff definitely like gotten bad too. But you just have to. You know, you have but to is it is it bad? Like he was saying, like you know, when somebody gets into a fight, mm-hmm. it's all over the world. Whereas la- back in when I was in high school, somebody got into a fight. Oh, maybe somebody told somebody they went to another school, but it never got out of my city. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. I could, I could grow. I could. I could grow up and maybe never. I mean, I, I can move forward. I think the whole thing. There's all these different phases of growing up. You got mm-hmm. phases where. You, you're, you're constantly growing and changing. And like I said, maybe if you knuckle up, you win some, you lose some. Right. But it's like a whole growing process, right? right? But it's like, if we, if we, I think the thing that the new age takes away is the moving forward part. Like you can't, something happens, you can't move forward from that part. The time that you fell out the chair or the time that right. you asked the question and, and it didn't work out well or right. whatever. You can't move forward from that point. It, you know, like, and when I was growing up, I think the crazier thing was it was so much. That I think there was a power in not knowing everything or not right. being and now exposed everybody wants to, to everything. everything. Yeah, it seems like information is so free, free. Keep right. information free. But right. it was like it took time. Like, it took me a long time to understand what the sex thing was. Or right. even when I thought I knew parts of it. There were right. parts that later on in life I, you know, learned about it, or you know, just. And now it's so easy to say it. Yeah, it's just it was a lot slower. It was yeah, a lot I slower agree. the the thing, you know. Technology. And I grew up like, kind of like with my mom and grandparents all together. Mm-hmm. And my mom worked a lot, so I was being babysit by my grandparents. So they're even more older as far as like what they their stuff is like. You know, super Baptist Christian, and you know, right, you know, right. so they're really like, ah, you know. But I didn't have a cell phone at fourteen, like you're saying. Yeah. I didn't have any type <laughs> of, you know. I yeah. had a phone, you know. I talked for House a long phone. time, right? And then people want to use the phone, so mm-hmm. I had to get off at certain yep. times and yep. stuff. Or you might have your grandmother get on her, oh, and you're like, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. can you, uh, can yeah. you? Get, I gotta call. The, to, I gotta yeah. call the church. <laughs> and you hurry this up. And I'm like, dang on it. Right. But it was just more simple. Now it's right. like, I'm thinking I'm going to have to adopt that thing where, man, I got passwords and stuff. And the only thing I always want to say is I want to create that relationship with my kid where, you know, we have an open dialogue. I just hope that the kid is accepting of that. Because, you know, sometimes you can get a kid that when you're saying, you may have all the intentions of creating that relationship, but then that kid, just their person, just the way they came out, they don't receive that i mean do you think that's possible like you get a kid that may be like i don't want to you to have my passwords i don't want you encroaching on my on my stuff like they're as they're growing no, they feel i think if a kid feels close to you it's not gonna they're not gonna buck mm. they're not gonna there's the only time they'll give you any sort of like eh, no, i'm not gonna do this if they feel like if you're not there, maybe they're not there and they feel some but if you're like say like hypothetically you have a kid your your girl's pregnant and she's due to have a baby end of the week and then as the baby's growing up and you're there and you have a close with your baby, the baby's not going to be like, no, dad, you can't, you know, because they, children only learn what you teach them. Mm. Like, for example, think about prejudice. Little children are not born prejudice. Exactly. You can have a room full of five-year-olds. You can have a little white boy from Tennessee, like pure white, like Aryan blood yeah, white. Blonde hair, blue yeah. eye. All um, you can have a little Asian girl. You can have a, a little, you know, Indian girl. You can have a Spanish, you know. And they'll all, now some may be more like, outgoing than others but no one's gonna sit there and be like oh you know you oh, look, at, look at this dirty asian stick or, yeah, or look yeah. at this chink eyed mm. you know asian you know or this dirty nigger nothing you know nothing crazy like that just cracker they're not gonna think that they get taught that at home mm. the kids may even walk up to each other and hug each other pet each other kiss each other you know touch each other they're not looking like oh this person has dirty skin or oh this person is beneath me as they get older the parents in the house are what they hear in the house. I mean, maybe the parents it could be grandparents, it could be, but it's people in the houses, their surroundings, where they learn these fucked up views and prejudice. If nobody, if prejudice never existed, no, you know, who's te- there would be nothing to teach. So mm. everybody would be one, and it would be one big peaceful world. But prejudice was that was just one of the things that you know was introduced into the world by who I don't know, but. That's kids can only kids learn through watching. So mm. if you're very loving with your kid and you're receptive, and you let them know like it's not, you know, they're not going to be like, 
oh no, you know, they're not gonna be rebellious or they're not gonna be against you. Cause that's your kid, they love you. Mm-hmm. So now if the mother is just like, your father ain't shit, <laughs> don't give me a password, you know, then I can see be like, dad, I'm not, you know, but no. Mm-mm. So you, be. you, you early, it, it, like when you were, you know, you're having your kids, and mm. did you already set kind of early in the game how you wanted to go about raising your kids, like, or this was something like you just as you were doing it, you? I just knew grew. I wanted to be close with my with my children, and I didn't because I also saw my sister run away a lot. Mm. Like I, I'm a watcher, and I learned a lot from watching other people. And I used to watch my sister get fucked up. Damn. I never got in trouble when I, because <laughs> I knew what Ma was was going to take and what she wasn't because i used to like i used to cry because my my mother was old school she used to <laughs> like make you find the switch <laughs> yeah she'd be the type where like oh because my sister was doing some wild stuff but she was a teenager and she was feeling like, oh she you know hormones kicked in and i don't she just went nuts so my mother would say like you know I, certain things i work at night do not have boys in the house you have a sister you know just these are rules that i want you to abide by and this is your sister, older sister my older sister okay. yeah when she was younger so and she tried my mom a few times and my mother got in that butt and i would watch and i would just like the minute like my mother was the type where if my sister did some crazy mess she would be like okay go in the room strip down to no. your panties and your in your little t-shirt and you're going to kneel in front of the bed no and it was like django <laughs> it's like she like yeah because my but my sister was doing some wild but she was doing some wild stuff that if my mother didn't stop and correct it would have just been out of control because kids will try you but they need to know who it's like a dog like if you just let a dog run wild you know dogs want to be they they need to have that alpha personality to let them know like look i'm the boss same thing with kids because like well um, it was a i was reading something where they were saying like children actually long for rules they long for boundaries they long for structure if you don't give it to them of course they're gonna you know they're gonna run wild but they really that's what they long for because they're looking to kind of have someone guide them Mm -hmm. so it's all about you you have to discipline them i'm not people they think a discipline thing like oh you beat them to the blood but no you know and it's ways of and that's another thing like i totally disagree with like people say oh if you beat the kids in public, sometimes the kid needs to be popped. I'm not saying go buck wild and take their head and bash it, <laughs> you know, and kill them and choke them out. But pop them. Let them know. Sleep. Yeah. Go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but let them know, like, uh, there's an adult here and you're going to listen. Because mm. if they don't listen, they keep running around buck wild. God forbid they're running around somewhere and something falls. Or say someone's driving a trolley in, like, the aisles of the, of the market and they, cra- they, they get hit, they get hurt. Now the kid is crippled for life or, you know, mm-hmm. so there's rules for a reason. So you, do you so. do the beatings? You, do you, you know I mean? pop. I don't do beatings. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I pop because, like thank I said, Jesus. with my daughter, <laughs> thank, thank with you. my daughter, I haven't had, you know what I'm saying, like I have not, thank God so far, I've not had to beat Jay. Like that. I've had to, like, pop her a couple times. She tried me and I had to <laughs> pop her. You know, like, don't, you know, mom's not playing with you. Mm. So, and she was like, okay. And with Nicholas, you know, he's, he, you know, I think ah. his father's going to be the one to be because oh, he's very boyish. He's not bad. <laughs> he's a boy, and he's like a true boy. Good, you know. So, and there's been a few times you say Nick does, and he'll look at you. He'll be like, no. And my fiance, I'd be like, what? What boy? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, like so he knows. Oh, you know the boy. The yeah. boy got to try the, the the pops one yeah. time. You know, yeah, you got to so. like. There's always that. Yeah, all right, I need you to take out the trash. Man, I ain't taking out no trash. What? Who did you say? <laughs> if that, um, I, I, I feel for the, for, I feel for Nicholas if he ever does that because <laughs> his father's not playing. I, I know a so. funny story. This guy, like, he, he, he had a girl in his room, and the, and his father came up and he said, "Hey, man, it's time for your company to go." Mm-hmm. And he was like, "Man, but we ain't even doing anything. They just had this whole thing." He said, "Man, if you don't, if you don't let, if you don't escort to the door, man." I'm going to score to the door for you. So they had this argument. So he was like an army type of dude. So he was like, all right, you want to talk all that stuff? They were fighting outside. They were fighting outside, like on some guffing stuff. But I guess from his standpoint, I guess he was looking at it like, <laughs> look, man, if you in my house, you know. And I kind of, I, I don't, I hope that, you know, I hope that I never had to come to that. But just the fact that you, you know what I mean? See, I why guess they go outside? Father, why didn't he correct him in front? Because that's so embarrassing. Like, if you yeah. embarrass somebody one good time in front of, like, they're, they're not going to do it again. They're going to think very, they may try, they may even think, like, wait a minute. Let me think. 
if, if I fuck around and do this shit again, I'm going to be embarrassed. I don't want to, you know, like mm. you may think to try it, but then you're going to, if these consequences bad enough, the kid is going to double think. He may go to, but he's like, wait, hold up. I remember last time. I got the shit smacked out of me in front of so-and-so, and they keep cracking. You know kids are cruel. They crack on you. Like, oh, I remember your father bust right. your shit. Yep. <laughs> yep. So. so when do you, uh, being that you have a daughter, like when do you have that talk with your daughter? Is what? it something that, is it continuous, that yes. talk? Or does it start from when they're young and yes. it comes all the way up? Yes, it's continuous. Because I never had that talk. I, I, yeah, I, don't, I, I don't know I if guys. To Jay. Um, <laughs> we had the, how did I start it? We were, Okay. It came to a point where, because like I said, she's she's very voluptuous. So when I saw she started developing, and I just asked one day, I said, Jay, I said, you know, um, does your, uh, has anybody ever said anything to you at school? Have you had any? And she was like, no. I said, you sure? Nobody's ever tried to, like, kiss you or touch you? I said, because you're very, you're curvy. I said, you you know. She was like, no. She was like, I mean, a couple of boys. Like, she'll, like I said, we talk. And right. So she'd just be like, um, she said to me something like, you know, I, people look at me, but nobody's ever made. And I was like, all right. I was like, well, I'm just letting you know the little the boys are like this. They're very physical. They, they're going to see you. I said, they're going to try you. I said, but just keep in mind, you know, I said that boys right now at this very young age, they're about sex. I said, now, I think you're too young to be sexual. I said, but if you feel that you need to go there, I'm not going to like it, but I need you to tell me. I need you to come and have a talk with me. Do not go to your friends, I said, because your girlfriends will tell you story. Oh, like they know everything. I said, I've been, I've been your age, and I've right. had the girlfriends try to influence me. Oh, girl, do it. No, I said it's. I said, but if you feel, <laughs> if for whatever reason, I'm not gonna like. I said, but please, whatever you do, talk to me. Right. I said, and if I have to. If I have to, I will go with you to get protection. If I have to, I said, but. I prefer you not to. I said, but if you feel that strong, like you have to do this, right? Tell me. I said, no matter. I said, if you feel you're ready to kiss a boy for the first time, if you feel you're ready to do whatever, please tell me. Just talk to me. I said because I can tell you better than some than people. Yes, yeah, the people your age are your age. They have lived the same exact amount of time as you. Right. They have experienced the same exact things you have. Right. They don't know stuff like mom knows or people of my age. We've been there. Right. So. That's a that's a jagged pill to swallow because uh, I mean I know what's coming. So you know it's coming. So you know it's coming to, yeah, and I think that's what makes it a little easier to swallow because I, especially in this day, it's, it's happening so quick. Like you have seven, eight year old girls sucking dick in the back of the school bus. Yeah. No, while the school bus is going to school. Right. I've seen news articles about oh, that. Oh, please, Mickey. We had it back when we were in school. <laughs> middle school. Like, girls were getting busy yeah, in middle yeah. school. Well, I mean, and, then the, and then the word virgin means absolutely nothing. Just because you haven't had a penis penetrate you does not mean you are a virgin. There's a lot of virgins yeah. that don't mean you're innocent. I, it's, 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 <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a crazy. But, you know, it's so weird. Like, the way that you talk about, you're like, having that open thing, I think it's like a generational thing. Because the way I grew up... Mm. And people it was more taboo. Grew up, it was like you don't talk about right, that but you stuff, have to you now. know. And you it was like now. it's so much I learned on my own mm -hmm. that it's insane. And I don't think, I just think my my parents they my, I know my grandparents ain't talk that stuff because they were just so Christian right. that it's like right. just don't do anything, get yeah. married, you, you do what you That's do when you enough. get like, married, too... you know. So they you know they're coming from that. So right. you know my moms and stuff they weren't into all that stuff. So now I'm thinking to myself like. I might be the first generation that has to do what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, because your like, children are going to be exposed. Yeah, it's another like, world. For example, um, Scandal. Yeah. Has an you seen Scandal? Yeah, okay. definitely. Okay. So seen you know Cy Cy okay. Cyrus and his husband. Yeah. They kiss on screen. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying. This is the world we live in now. Queen, Queen, Queen. It's and a guy and a in guy. Scandal, in Scandal, the president has a right hand man named Cyrus. Cyrus has a husband. What's well, his name? James? Yeah, something like something that. Something like that. Something like that. But they are two main characters. Yeah. They are shown at home. They have arguments. They're fighting. They were having a fight about um, the husband. Cyrus's husband wanted to uh, adopt the baby. And Cyrus promised the husband that they would adopt the baby, so he quit his job. And then because the husband saw Cyrus was bullshitting, 
he went back to doing he was like a journalist for the White House and he got re- he was pulled into the storyline because he was reporting some scandalous mess and Cyrus and were falling out and then like they Cyrus went home and they were like having a full blown argument and like they just grabbed each other up and started like tongue kissing. This was not seen back when Mickey was a kid and you was you know that was right. vi- that was more taboo now it's more open you know what I mean yeah. so yeah you're going to have to have an ongoing talk with your children because of what they're exposed to what kids are exposed to now my generate my 14 years was not exposed to that i'm sure yours wasn't al i'm sure yours wasn't this is new this is you know things that you normally would clutch your pearls like oh now it's normal yeah i mean this is the time matter of fact hbo was the hardest thing you had to avoid i i don't know if you guys saw but there's a movie called paranorman it was a okay did you see it? No. It was a movie. No, I didn't get to see it. So I'm sick. Right? No, no, no. Isn't it about there's a world like Paranorman. It was a little boy and he could see ghosts. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he had a yeah. sister. It looked now cool. the sister is first of all, she's drawn crazy. Like she's this white girl with blonde, a little teeny tiny and she's big old, you know, she's she's very curvy on the mm-hmm. But the thing that threw me off and I was like, "What?" You know what I'm saying? I was like, not saying that I mean, I do not judge anyone's sexuality. The LGB, you know, the the lesbian gay community is. I have nothing, you know, like I have a lot of friends who are in, you know, who are in that community as well. Mm-hmm. But my thing is, it should not be. That's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of things are being targeted at the younger generation. Yeah. Like, you, we have to let these kids grow up and decide exactly. if they want to be with exactly. another woman. And I don't think that's or a boy want right to be with now. another yeah. man. Stop. We're the society is starting to condition this at a young age. Yeah. Now, when you get grown, you decide to make that decision as a man. I want to be with another man. That's your prerogative. That's what you do, and no one has the right to judge you. Mm-hmm. Or you're a grown woman, you decide you want to be with other women. Okay, then you're grown. No one can frown down on that. But in the movie Paranorman, which is a children's movie, it, all through the movie, um, the little boy he has a sister. Like I told you, the real curvy girl. So she likes this jock in their neighborhood. And all through the movie, she's chasing the boy, chasing the boy, dropping little hints like, I like you, I want to take you out. And then at the very end, after they kill all the, the ghosts and stuff like that, um, they're walking, I think, back to the guy's car. And so she was just like, yeah, so anyway, what about that date or something like that? And he just was, she was like, you know, I, I really like these movies and blah, blah, blah. So he says, oh, yeah, my boyfriend, he loves those movies, the kind of those, those kind of movies that make you cry. And I was sitting in a theater like, what? This is a kids movie. <laughs> Stop conditioning these kids. So now I said, I bet you a lot of parents now got it. Now they're driving home in the car, and a little five year old like, "Mommy, what did, what did he mean his boy? What you mean his boyfriend? His boyfriend like, what you I, what you mean a boyfriend? A boy go with a boy? And they don't even understand you young, boy yeah, and like, girl yet. They don't even understand right. that part. So yet. I'm not. I mean, like I said, if you are grown. Exactly. You want to be a man with a man and a grown woman being with a woman. That is you. You have every right to do that and live happily, but to condition children. Yeah, Stop right. targeting and over-sexualizing these kids. Yeah, the same thing right. with Miley Cyrus and the VMAs. Um, it's, and it's, shit is so out in the open now. It's like it's hidden, it's hidden in plain sight. Everything is like right, right in our faces. Yeah, this is SpongeBob cannot, had a lot of stuff that was like not yeah, very, for, very innuendo. Yeah, yeah, like a lot of innuendo. Mm-hmm. I, I just think SpongeBob like, has a lot of adult themes in it because like sometimes there's been a few times where I'm watching it and I would laugh because it was an adult joke and my daughter and Jay would look at me and she would be like, "That's not funny." I said, "It is. You just don't understand." Yeah, but that shit is hilarious. Yeah. You know, that's why you don't get it because you're a kid. Because she was like, "That's not funny, mom." I said, "Yes, it is." It's hilarious. But I don't you know. want that in my kids' cartoons. But you, I want I the Tom it. and Jerry. That's why, that's I why want you, the Wiley listen, Coyote. They got Sprout. Put, let your kid watch Sprout. Sprout is a uh, Nick watches Sprout all the time. Mm-hmm. So I mean, or just buy DVDs. Yeah, that's all you I'm, can do. I'm putting because you stuff can't control on what what the networks are going to show. Yeah. Like I said, the more the world gets, the more advanced the world gets, is like people are they're going to show more stuff that we're like. That's I'm taking it back. And all they can say to you is. Turn the channel, I'm and that's all you back. can do. Tom and Jerry, no, I just can't all take you it can back, do. man. Animania. You can't do that, man. You can't I'm do that. Taking it back. What the best? I think. <laughs> I think what I've learned from this conversation is the best thing to do is if, as times are evolving, parenting has to evolve too. Yeah. You know, you gotta be able to communicate with your child, yeah. whereas and talk to them. And sometimes yeah. something that should be only spoken on once has to be a continuous thing yeah, because you, 
things are constantly changing. And your kids should have that. The more risque things are being now shown. Right. They got to have that relationship, right? Yeah. They, the, but the, you build that from infantry. Yeah. Because I, uh, I don't think, like, I think that's for anything. You have people, I got conversations I would talk to my mom about, and there's mm-hmm. conversations I wouldn't talk to my mom about. Right. Um, and I don't, and I, just, I don't know if that's anything. It's, it's probably like some things that your your daughter may not talk to you about. But she might not. But I I tell you. But you have that open. You can talk to. You like can I talk, talk right. To her, you can talk to me. And whenever right. she comes to me, I make sure like I don't have like a snappy tone of voice. Right. Or like if she says, "Mom," I'll be like, "What?" You know, like. Right. Because that's know. very. That's a yeah, very delicate. That's putting up a barrier. Right. You know, you have to be. You may not right. like. You may not like what you're gonna hear, but you have to be. I just open. think it's so funny that you know you were saying that. Uh, you know about the text messages. I just remember my mom found all these letters this girl wrote me in like yeah. middle school. It's like told it's the same thing, but it's different. Right. You know. Right. So it's just the times have changed. You yeah. know, whether well, it's been letters now, it's text messaging now. Right. And you right. got and I think you got to be just abrupt and abreast of what's going on as far as yeah. technology is going on. Like it's not just Facebook now. Mm-mm. It's not just Instagram. Mm-mm. You know, just as soon as that you think it's one thing, it's three other things that they could possibly get into. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but also too, you can tell if you know. You can also tell like how a child changes. You can kind of tell by like actions too. You gotta watch. So mm-hmm. if it seems like where before your child may have been more open with you, if they start to kind of do like a shutdown, they kind of withdraw. Yeah, exactly. You gotta go after them like, what's going on with you? Like, why are you withdrawing? Right. No, nothing's wrong. We're like Jay. Sometimes Jay will be in her little moods. I say Jay was wrong. Nothing. Jay was wrong. Nothing. I was like, okay, you're lying. Something's wrong. But okay, right. I know something's wrong. But Okay, nothing's wrong. Whatever. So this is a full time job. And at one job. point, she's just like, "Mom, the other day when I was upset, like I know you could tell because right. when you're or anybody, even in a relationship, like if your wife is one way, mm-hmm. and then she acts totally different and she's kind of withdrawn, you're gonna be like, something ain't right. Like yeah. what's going on? Are you okay? You know, she may not tell you, but you know from right. watching her and being around her and her habits right. and her ways, you know if." <laughs> Something is wrong or not. Right. So, so you you feel like you made a lot of um, a lot of your mistakes with your first child, and then going into the second child, you'd be able to correct some of those mistakes or learn a lot I from those mistakes. I don't think I really made any mistakes yet because, like I said, Jay, she's not she's not wilding out. She's not running away. Right. She's not talking to me all crazy. So I think I'm doing a pretty decent job so far. Okay. Like I just know, like I have to stay abreast, and I know, you know, I gotta let her know that, you know, I still want her to see me. As a friend, kind of, but not fully, because there is that rule that if your child sees you too much as a friend, they're not going to. So I let her know every so often that as much as you can talk to me, right. I will still put my foot in your ass if you step over the line. So you say it in that movie, like, I will mm-hmm. put my foot in your ass. And she'd be like, Mom, you're so mean. I tell Jay I'm going to fuck her up all the time. I'm I'd be like, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah. i smack the shit out of you. Yeah. Mom, I mean that shit. Don't play right. with me. Right. All right. You can't be like, now... You know better than to talk to mommy like that, cause she gonna be like in the back of her head, like, bitch. So <laughs> okay, so you know what I mean? I... Like, cause kids these days are not the same. They are more. A fourteen year old is like an eighteen year old, like mental, like they're exposed to too much. Right. Well, let me yeah. ask you this question. This might seem out of the way, but being that you said that your sister was kind of out there, does that, how does that relationship involve with your daughter and your? Is that is, is she around or is she like? What do you mean? As far as your her aunt. Oh, she's down south. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's down south. Oh, okay. Yeah, and her two daughters are now, my two nieces are grown. Oh, gotcha. One, one is old. Um, they're both in, like, their 20s. The youngest has a baby. The oldest one doesn't. She's still, like, she's very career-oriented. But, um, no, like, when my sister comes to visit, her and Jay talk. But it's just, you know, Jay is, Jay's a good kid. Like, I can honestly say Jay is good. She's a straight A. She's an honor student. Nice. She's okay. been an honor student since Jay's in eighth grade now. Like, Jay's actually gifted and talented classes. Nice. So Jay, she does her work. Right. I don't have any like when she goes. Um, also, so I give her freedom. Like I don't. You can't. Like I let her. She has her girlfriends around in our community. Right. Um, her our other girlfriend Amy's. We'll go to. I'll take both of them to the movies. My best friend has two daughters around my daughter's age, and sometimes we have girls' day out. My girlfriend Lafise has uh, TT and Tyler, and they're both one. T, Tyler is younger than Jay, and then TT's older than Jay, so it's like three in a row. But they're all, and so. Right. Yeah, I still let Jay still has fun. She's still a kid. You know, I don't, I'm not stifling her at all. And I, yeah. I reward her. Like, you're doing good in school. She's, like, excellent in school. Her teacher, I never have an issue. I think I had not even an issue. There was something that happened where um, 
it was a group of her girlfriends and they wanted to play a little game that was written on paper. And Jay, she told me, she came home, she's like, mom, I want to go ahead and call you before the school calls you. They're going to call you today because I got wrapped up in this game. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't my idea. But one of the girls was like writing these truth or dare things for us to do to the guy. She was like, a couple of things I was like, there's no way I'm doing that. Like it has something to do with like showing her, like pulling up her shirt real quick. She was like, and I feel right. like I'm not doing that. I may walk up to, yeah, it's, it just, it was a crazy game. But then the teacher ended up calling and everything the teacher told me Jay had already told me. So it wasn't like Jay half-assed told the story and tried to hide. Jay right. was very upfront and straight with me. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying it's good to be, you got to talk yeah. to your kid you because, yeah. Like, so, you know, and Jay, she told me, she was like, Mom, I'm, I'm telling you now, you're going to get a call later from the school. And I was like, for what? And then she was like, no, just give me a minute. And she was like, it's not what you think. She was like, but I was involved in the game. Some of the girls took it further than I did, but they tried to, but I told them no. She's like, but still, the teacher found the, the letter, the paper with everybody's stuff on it. Right. And called all of us, like, we're calling you guys as parents. So she's like, I wanted to go ahead and let you know. And then I knew she didn't lie to me. Like, I was waiting. I was like, and then when she told me, I, as she told me, I'm just sitting there and I'm just like, okay. I said, is there anything you're leaving out? No. I said, are you sure? I said, because if this teacher calls me. Right. And it's a different story than what you told me. I said, I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah. And she was like, mom, no, I told you everything. I said, okay. And then when the phone rang, she even picked my phone up and she said, here, mom. And she stood right there in front of me. And I put the phone on speaker. And I was like, and the teacher, everything Jay told me, the teacher right. reiterated, it did not miss a beat. And I said, okay. So when we hung up, she said, am I in trouble? I said, no. I said, you're not in trouble because you told me the truth. Okay. And you came to me. I said, but do not try, use better judgment next time. I said, if you think something, she was like, all right. And I was like, you know, just, I said, you're doing good. I said, I'm proud of you. I said, so just keep it up. Right. So, so. Ha, you as a parent, have you ever ratcheted up something, been a little more fierce than you're supposed to be because you know, like, say for instance, she did something that was really small, but you took it to the next level so she'll know next time not to do it because what she did potentially could make a bigger impact later on down the road. What do you mean? Like, give me an example. Uh, how can I give an example? Um, say for instance, she, something small, she took a piece of candy from somewhere she wants okay. to take a piece of. And it's not a big deal, but you see that potentially this could be a big deal right. later on down the road. Have you ever been in that situation before? I show her a movie. You show her a movie. Mm -hmm. Talk to her through movies. Yeah. Okay. I say, if this this is what can happen, and she'll sit there and she'll be like, like, as a matter of fact, I, I have, it's not on Netflix. I have to get it, but I'm going to because my mother, <laughs> one of the reasons why it took me so long to lose my virginity is one day my mother sat me down and she was like, we're going to watch a movie, I said. Okay, what movie we watch? She's like, we're going to watch Looking for Mr. Goodbar. And I said, this looks boring. I don't want to watch this. And she was like, you're going to watch this movie. She's like, I'm going to sit here with you, and you're going to watch this. Have you seen Looking for Mr. No. Goodbar? No. Have you seen it, Mickey? With, with, uh, it's an old 70s movie. Not at all. And pull it up, and you'll see what it's about. Matter of fact, it was Rich, one of Richard Gere's first movies. But it was a story about, um, I think it was Diane Lane. And... Um, when she, she was, was a she was a vir this chick was like a virginal type of secretary chick, but she got turned out by her boss, Diane Keaton. She got turned out by her boss sexually, and this chick and it was in the seventies, so you know, free love, free sex. Oh, and she went nuts like she was fucking everybody, anybody she can get her hands on, because the man that broke her virginity did her really dirty. Mm -hmm. And with virgins, what a lot of men fail to realize is virgins are very naive mentally because they haven't they're, they haven't been experienced to you know. Um, and she ended up, like, she she came across Richard Gere. He was, like, a party boy. There's a scene of him in his jock strap, and he's hopping around the bedroom, like, woo, all hopped up on drugs and just acting crazy. And they don't, um, they don't last whatever. She has sex with him. She kicks him out. So she goes to another club, lonely, looking for love in all the wrong places, and she comes across this dude, and she takes him home, and he kills her. So oh. that <laughs> made me be like, I'm not being out there all wild and crazy sexually because, you know, so like with Cyberbully, like I, when we watched it, I was just like, this something like this can happen if you are caught out there with sending pictures to guys. I said, because what you feel to, re I said, what a lot of little girls feel to realize is they let these guys talk to them, soup them up, making them think that they really like them for the wrong reasons. I said, then they have them send a picture. Nine times out of 10, they got all their boys sitting there. They showing their boys, oh, send that to me, dog. Then before you know it, they showing all the and the little girls. Oh, you a slut! Oh, you and then they, they, yeah. make you gotta leave school and then they they it follows you. And I said so. So it's 
in this day and age, you could show somebody a movie and say, look, if you like how you said we're stealing, if you steal and you like it and you start to make a habit out of it, this can happen to you. You don't want that to happen to you. No. So Parenting don't steal. is a full-time job. Man. It is. So. It's a full-time job. I'm just gonna but be it can uncle. be fun. You can watch a lot of movies. I'm going to just be <laughs> uncle. <laughs> uncle Mickey's coming over. Yeah, Pick so, you up, take yeah, you no, out, just, and take you back home. Yeah, just all, not just, even your even your nieces and your nephews. You got to talk to them, too. Yeah, I get, give them a little short talk. I, I, I got my guns ready. Damn. Yeah, no guys come to this door. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna come up here. <laughs> or if with they it. do, if they do come, you know, like you, and also too, you Bad can't, boys too. you can't just block them off from that because that's part of, you know, they're gonna, it's gonna happen. And if you don't, because I like if Jay, the first time I had my first date, my mother took me and the guy my very first day out on, she chaperoned a date. Mm -hmm. She drove us to the movies and then she was like, "With well, y'all not even gonna see me." She was in the movie theater with us, but she was all the way in the back. She oh, could see us, cool. but she wasn't like up under us and like, "What are y'all doing?" You know, <laughs> "What are you doing?" You know, wasn't, you know, she. But she let us know, and she was, and I didn't know that she, she was all the way in the back. She told me some years later, like I was in the theater with y'all, but I didn't want to be in a way I didn't. And oh, I, for a minute, I almost cool. forgot that my mother was there with us until after the movie and we're walking to the lobby and she's like, Hey guys, I'm over here. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's ways of allowing your child to experience stuff. Just not. So you're there and you know, stay so, in your room. You ain't going nowhere. Yeah. I mean, but that's, that's unrealistic. Cause think about you growing up. Like if you, did you I, want to be shut off? Did I you want to? Out. I, I yeah, and I, and I think kids know, at one out. point they try and they do a little sneak, you know, sneak thing or sneak away. No, or, well, I, I snuck girls in the house. They used to come on the roof, but we had a a, a fire pit, <laughs> and they used to get on the fire pit and come across. The roof. And the sad thing about it is, <sighs> my mom knew about it the whole time. That's crazy. No, she knew about it the whole time because no. she said she she could hear the girls walking across. Mm. Yeah, the roof. Yeah, she, and she, didn't, did she say anything about it? She never she never said anything about it. Wow. Yeah, she never said anything hey, about so, it. So she's, she's, so she's sitting there, you know, reading a book or what, and, and then you hear. And a lot of times, y'all don't feel the like a lot of times parents know stuff and won't tell you. They know what's going on. Like the, you got to like what you did. You're we've already and, and my mother's always said, and I never knew what she meant until now. Mm. Now that I told you, I said I know everything you're trying to. You know, I've been. I know. I can tell. I know. So it's so. You know. Well, it's been it's been a pleasure having you here. I mean, yeah. uh, oh, yes, oh, you man. know, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> you know, oh, the cut. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> no, it's yeah. Yes, you know, we've been trying to set this up for a while, and hopefully, you know, yeah. she'll come back in some capacity. We never know. We never know. Oh, man. So, uh, anything you want to say to the people before you leave? Uh, Thank you guys for listening to me run my mouth. <laughs> yes. We've been recording for like yeah. what? Almost two thirty. Oh well, man, it's a long one. Yeah. Oh man! Hopefully it's uh, entertaining. Yes. <laughs> to keep yes. you, <laughs> to keep people listening. Like a, I'm tired at the hour mark. Yeah, no well, more. Exactly. Yeah. Well, hopefully you guys, get, you know, learned a lot about Miss Jason. Be sure to check out a lot of her movies. She's on IMDb. Uh, Jason Nicole. Uh, or you can Google. Or Google. You know, Jason yes. Nicole. Yeah. Yes. So. And uh, we'll post. I'll post her uh, IMDb stuff on there so you guys can check it out. So. Okay. And Facebook yes. and. I, and the Twitter and all that good Twitter. stuff. All that good stuff. Okay, give, give, it, give it Twitter. Give it to the people. My Twitter is at the T H E, not T H E E, but it's the or the, which is T H E underscore Jace underscore Nicole. There you go. You have it. Mickey, you got anything to say before we leave? She's the coolest. Oh, I said the same thing. Thank you. All right, we're about to get out of here. Y'all have a good one. All right. Peace Night. out. <laughs>